want to know the building needs to my granddaughter. The August 20th, 2019 meeting of the City Council of the City of Springfield, Illinois is called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk, if you'd please call the roll. Will do. Alderman Redpath. Here. Alderman Gregory. Here. Alderwoman Turner. Here. Alderman Fulgenzi. Here. Alderman Proctor. Here. Alderwoman DeCenso. Present. Alderman McMiniman. Here. Alderwoman Connolly. Present. Alderman Donnellan. Here. Alderman Hanauer. Here. Mayor Langfelder. Here. Mr. Mayor, a quorum is present. Thank you. Uh, I wrote out a statement because I want to be concise, and uh, for me this is a personal matter and an emotional one uh, that I take to heart. And uh, this past Sunday at 4 o'clock in the morning, Springfield responded to a pop-up party disturbance. This type of activity has been reported periodically throughout the summer. I was extremely concerned about the crowd, crowd's conduct toward our officers. Bottles were thrown, which seriously injured one of our own Springfield police officers. We, as a community, should not tolerate this type of behavior. Any attack or assault on our officers is an attack and assault on each and every one of us. The men and women of the Springfield Police Department are dedicated to keeping us all safe. Everyone in our community should show our officers the positive respect that they deserve because they protect and serve all of us. We will not tolerate aggressive behavior towards our officers. We will continue to work with everyone in our community to make Springfield the peaceful, respective, and supportive community that everyone wants and deserves. Thank you. So, Chief, I don't know if you want to say anything or... First and foremost, a uh, job well done, I'd say, but with that, to add to it, it's just simply that we know this is a dangerous job. We all signed up for it. We know that we put ourselves in harm's way at times, but uh, we've been working hard on the relationship with our community over the last six years to make it better, and there's just certain times things escalate for various reasons. With that say, uh, my officers did the right things. I watched hours and hours of video. We're still reviewing more. There's nothing that I've seen where my officers did anything wrong. Uh, with that said, um, we're gonna do our best to bring those to justice who threw the bottles. We're reviewing video. We have our law enforcement partners working with us, pulling video off the line through various resources, and we will hold those accountable who threw the bottles when we find out who they are. So with that, my officer is doing well. He's still law off, obviously, he's suffering from a concussion and several staples to the head. Uh, but again, you know, this is one of those things that we all know the risk that we take. But I stand by my officers on this, and uh, they're 100% right from everything I've seen so far. Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions or Is this Alderman a result of, of people getting out of a 3 o'clock bar? Is this another one, another strike against the 3 o'clock bars? Or? I'd like to chief We've I been dealing with pop-up parties off and on for years, going back to my rookie days when it was Denny's on Stevenson, where they eventually closed, to the Steak and Shake on Dirksen, where they closed, to the gas station on South Grand where they closed during those hours. Uh, it pops his head up every so many, so often. Uh, we've been dealing with this. This was brought to our attention uh, from some concerned aldermen earlier in the summer. We've been dealing with it off and on. It comes and goes. Some nights are worse than others. Usually we can go out there and we can move it on, de-escalate it, move it on, and sometimes you can. And uh, this time, unfortunately, it got to a point where somebody got hurt. Uh, but it does pop up, and what it is is people that after the 3 o'clock bar is closed, they decide they want to continue their party, and they'll pick whatever neighborhood it is, whatever business it is, and the sheer volume of people overtakes that. Uh, and that's why in the past history, some businesses have closed during those hours. And uh, it's not an easy problem to solve because everybody has their own opinions about what they can do and what they can't do. Then it spills into the streets, and then it escalates. The issue is when you get 130 to 150 people together who've been drinking all night and want to continue to drink, and they want to disturb the neighborhood just by their presence and just the amount of people talking or playing music or whatever, it never fails that there seems to be something that escalates some of these events, and the next thing you know, we have violence breaking out. 
You know, I have an unsolved homicide from a few years ago that broke up out of one of these pop-up parties that we are still working to this day. Uh, there's been numerous incidents over the years. It's just one of those things that the locations change. You know, the locations change. We are working with the property owners and the neighbors of that area to try to get this under control. We'll continue to do that. Uh, but my fear is it's just going to move somewhere else. You know, uh, whether that's, you know, we've had issues in various neighborhoods around the city over the years. So it's one of those things that's a challenge to deal with them. The fact that they can just pop up and spring up with social media in a matter of seconds to where everybody's going. You know, prior to this incident, I myself had went out and met with the tenants of that area over a month ago. Uh, trying to get them on our side for some buy-in uh, about, hey, we need to work on this. And uh, it got better for a little bit. And then unfortunately, it got worse again. Chief, is the injured officer at home? Oh. Yes, he's off right now, yes. Good. Chief. To answer your question, though, Alderman Ann uh, if we didn't have 3 o'clock license, it'd be 2 o'clock. I mean, it just moves up whenever they close the bars. I think that's what happens. The there. party continues. Yeah. Yep. So, Chief, we, um, you know, first off, I, you know, I want you to definitely pass my, uh, um, you know, my condolences and, you know, uh, to that officer. I, I have a, uh, a uh, high level of respect for you and um, your, your department. I think you do a fabulous job. Um, we have talked about this uh, situation and, you know, we put our heads together to try to come to some solutions um, for it. And, you know, I think we, we, we were making that um, you know, making some progress on, on this issue. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think I, I did make it clear in, 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 in um, any statement that I've had that, you know, um, four o'clock, five o'clock gatherings um, in, in the neighborhood is not the best idea. I don't like getting calls at uh, four o'clock when my daughter getting woke up about those. Um, I have seen some of the videos. Um, I think we do have some opportunities to, to look at it and make sure that we, um, <clears throat> In, 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 in high pressure situations that, you know, we, we maintain a high level. Um, you know, I definitely uh, spoke to those those individuals about those parties and they're unacceptable. Um, and, you know, some people are not too happy about that. And, um, you know, I did see some things in those videos that they do concern me. So I, I definitely want to get with you and, and um, uh, deputy chief and make sure that we, we, we go through it and we look at it and, you know, if there's anything that we're missing, you know, we make sure we address. No, absolutely. And what I would say if somebody's got video out there, please forward it. Thank you. Please forward it. We would like to paint the best picture we can of everything. Chief, I want to tell you, you know, your outreach program is, is second to none. Uh, when the mayor came on and and kept you on as the chief, uh, the first thing you did was uh, do an outreach, and uh, I applaud you for that. Uh, you've done, done your best to work with the communities. Uh, the professionalism of our police department is, is uh, I, I, I've been a law enforcement officer for 40 years. I'm gonna tell you right now, I've, I've, you guys have done a great job preparing. Um, we, the best thing that could come along is the video cameras that we have now, the, the, uh, that we can look back and see all the evidence and see how things are going. The most important thing is that we just got to keep, make sure we keep those neighborhoods safe and we're doing a good job of it. And my condolences to, to the officer that uh, was uh, injured. So thank you. No, I totally agree. Again, the officers every day, we, we signed up for this. We know the risk that we are taking. Uh, they do a great job day in and day out. And they're out there trying to make the best of a bad situation. It's hard to control when you're outnumbered 10 to one. The uh, one thing I will say is, uh, you know, the body cameras were, uh, were, I think, the first or second community. I think Chicago might have been. We beat Chicago. Yeah, so we were the first in the state. First major city, yes. There were some small towns that were operating. And that proved, uh, you know, worth its weight in gold because what you pointed out points out both sides. That's where uh, we acted in a couple incidents decisively. One wasn't in favor of the police department. One was. And so what I want to make sure everybody understands is it's never okay to throw anything at a police officer. I don't care what it is. That's not going to be tolerated. They're here. We, and that's the problem with society across the United States. We lost respect. And when you don't respect an officer, you're not going to respect anybody. You know, they're here to protect each and every one of us. And that's what they're here to do, to serve us. And so we will look at the video. You know, there's, I always critique myself. I don't watch council meetings time after time, but I'm sure people do tell me. And I listen, and that's what we'll do. We will critique ourselves. What could we do differently? Uh, but really, with 
hope you wish, people in the crowd say, let's, you know, work together, you know, it's, you know, settle down or what have you, but any assault, again, or attack on our officers is attack on each and every one of us. It should never be tolerated, and it's not acceptable. And just for all those out there who may be watching, obviously, if you have information toward this crime or any other unsolved crime, we would ask you to call Crime Stoppers. You're eligible for a reward. Any information providing this crime would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Chief. So now we'll go into the zoning portion of our meeting. The first item on the agenda is docket number 2019-021 for the property located at 1800, 1806, 1810, and 1814 South 11th Street. Petitioner is Sadio Ali Akap, sorry if I mispronounce that. Present zoning classification is S2, Community Shopping and Office District Section 155.031 for 1800, 1806, and 1810 South 11th Street, and R2 Single Family and Duplex Residence District, Section 155.017, 1814 South 11th Street. Requested zoning relief reclassification to B1, Highway Business Service District, Section 155.033, and for a variance of Section 155.322C, illuminated signs to permit illuminated signs located within 100 feet of a residential zoning lot or in the alternative reclassification of 1814 South 11th Street to S2 and granting a use variance for the four lots to permit a vehicle filling station and convenience store with no alcohol sale. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is denial of requested B1 zoning, but recommends reclassification of the R2 lot to S2 Community Shopping and Office District Section 155.031 and a use variance to allow a vehicle filling station and convenience store for the four lots with no alcohol sales in the S2 district as requested in the petition. Also re recommendation of approval of the requested variance of Section 155.322C, illuminated sign to permit illuminated signs located within 100 feet of a residential zoning lot. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission. Chair will entertain a motion. Move to uh, accept the, the uh, zoning recommendation. Second. Been moved and seconded to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation and second any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes, those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the docket number passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Oh, did you want to say anything? That's the best speech you've ever given. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best That's speech you've ever given. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, he charges by the hour. That's right. <laughs> Next time on the agenda is docket number 2019-029 for the property located at 534 South 2nd Street. Petitioner is Illinois AFL-CIO. Present zoning classification is R5B, General Residence and Office District Section 155.021. Requested zoning relief variance of the Residence Office Sign Regulations Sections 155.311. Non-illuminated name pl plats and identification signs to allow two sign structures of 109 square feet, each containing signage of 88 square feet on the front and approximately 48 square feet on the back of each structure. This is in addition to any existing signage. Instead of one identification sign with an area not exceeding 24 square feet and indicating only the name or address of the building of the management thereof, 155.314 illuminated signs to allow two electronic message signs with the structures being 109 square feet each and the electronic message signs 88 square feet each with the AFL-CIO letters on the outline of the state of Illinois and the black or the back side of each structure, approximately 48 square feet each, instead of one illuminated non-flashing sign permitted. And 155.315, a residential and office district signs conformance to allow signs to a zero foot front property line setback instead of the 10 feet required per code. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is denial. Planning and zoning recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission to deny the petition. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve as originally submitted. Second. Okay. Been moved and second to approve the request as submitted. Correct. And I did talk to, I don't know if Tim Dre's here. Yes. Yep. Uh, if you'd like to come up, 
I'd like to uh, uh, have an amendment if that's uh, acceptable, where there be uh, no advertisement. We talked about uh, legislative advertisement or political advertisement on there. And then also, uh, if the opportunity allows itself for the city to make emergency announcements, something of that nature. So if you'd speak I, to yeah. that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Our intention is to build a, a labor uh, history plaza in front of our building, uh, existing building. Uh, spend about $350,000 doing this of our money uh, with a doctor in conjunction with uh, Dr. Soderstrom, erect an eight-foot statue of a, uh, of a president of the AFL-CIO, 40-year uh, president, and uh, part of it with the uh, electronic uh, signs and uh, we would it, it would be educational use only labor history we would not be putting any vote for candidate x or support senate bill five or whatever it would be and then the mayor came up with a very good suggestion ask if we would uh, use it for uh, public uh, informational in emergencies or amber alerts and things like that we readily agreed to that and and very very supportive of that amendment great so is there a second? Second. To second. Any discussion? All those in so, favor of the aye. amendment say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Uh, motion on the ordinance or the uh, docket number as amended. So moved. Second. 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 Been moved and second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, thank you for your amendment. I think it's a very worthy amendment. Um, this is one of the front doors to our capital city, Second Street. We've got a very vast number of lobbying groups, including the state, Illinois State Bar Association, for example, but a, a very large number of different lobbying groups along Second Street. So we have to be really careful about setting a precedent here where um, Second Street becomes a, you know, a Christmas tree of, of uh, advocacy and uh, potentially political statements. So Mr. Miriam, I think you made a very wise amendment that, as I understand your amendment, um, it, it um, precludes political advertising with the electronic um, board that would be erected there. Is that correct? And, uh, as uh, Tim Dre of the AFL-CIO pointed out when I called him, he said it's educational just like he proposed. So we appreciate him allowing us to put it in writing to codify that so it doesn't matter who's sitting where well, I'm, in the future. It's actually, we're very happy that you did that because it takes a lot of pressure off us from elected officials. <laughs> 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 Just saying. That's right. That's good. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Any other discussion or comments? All in favor of the uh, docket number as amended, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the docket number passes 11 voting yes, none voting no. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you Members for your investment council. in the city. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2019-030 for the property located at 405 South MacArthur Boulevard. Petitioner is Stacy M. Sponsler. Present zoning classification is R2, single family and duplex residence district section 155.017. Requested zoning relief. Reclassification to S1 Neighborhood and Commercial and Office District, Section 155.030. If reclassification is deemed inappropriate, petitioner requests consideration for a use variance for a salon spa, including microblading on the first floor and a residential dwelling units on the second and third floor for a total of three dwelling units in the R2 zoning district. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is denial of the petition as submitted, but grant a use variance to allow a salon spa with uses as requested in the petition on the first floor and no more than three dwelling units on the upper floors in the R2 district. Planning Zoning Commission recommendation is denial of the requested S1 zoning, but grant a use variance to allow the salon spa with uses as specified in the petition on the first floor and no more than three dwelling units on the upper floors and limit signage to the existing sign. Chair will entertain a motion. I move that we accept the recommendation. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded to accept the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation. And second, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the ordinance passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. 
Next item on the agenda is docket number 2019-031 for the property located at 3500 West Washington Street. Petitioner is Springfield Lutheran High School, present zoning classification R1 single family residence district section 155.015, requested zoning relief, a variance of section 155.016 regulations of the R1 single family residence district to permit an S2 community shopping and office district condition permitted use pursuant to section 155.407, conditional permitted uses for wireless telecommunication facilities, attendance towers in the R1 single family residence district for installation of a telecommunications pole, small cell antenna with an approximate height of 41 feet located in an east yard in a R1 zoning district and variance of section 155.001 definitions lot to allow two principal uses on a lot. A high school with a chapel and a commercial wireless telecommunication facility antenna tower. Section 155.087C3 conditional permitted uses by the city council general conditions to allow the vehicular entrance and exit of the use to be a zero feet on the same lot as the exit or entrance of the school chapel instead of the minimum 100 feet required. Section 155.403, wireless telecommunications facilities, bulk regulations to allow the facility pole and antenna to be three feet from the east property line instead of a minimum required 15 feet. Section 155.404, wireless telecommunication facilities parking requirement for a variance from the regulations cross-reference in Article V, off-street parking and loading to allow the existing school at parking lot to accommodate the parking demand of the unmanned commercial wireless telecommunication facility antenna tower and section 155.0405 wireless te telecommunications facilities landscaping and aesthetic requirements to allow the commercial wireless telecommunication facility antenna and tower without the provision of a six foot opaque screening fence. Springfield Sangam County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is approval. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangam County Regional Planning Commission. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation. Second. Been moved and second to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation. Any discussion? Would you like to introduce yourself? Or you, you here to Hi, I'm Vanessa Ross. I'm from at and and okay. I was here to see if you guys had any questions or anything about what we want to do at Lutheran High. So. Thank you. Any questions at all? Okay, thank you. All in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the docket number passes, 10 voting yes, none voting no. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2019-032. For the property located at 225 Tate Drive, petitioner is Mark Griffith and Jennifer Valenti. Present zoning classification is R1 single family residence district section 155.016. Requested zoning relief variance of section 155.001 regarding accessory buildings to allow the accessory building a pool house to include a bathroom. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is denial. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is grant the petition as submitted to construct a structure to be used exclusively by the resident of the property as a pool house. Chair, will I entertain a motion? Uh, yes, I move to accept the uh, Planning and Zoning Commissions um, to grant the petition as submitted to construct a structure to be used exclusively by the resident of the property as a pool house. Second. It's been moved and second to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation to accept the recommendation using the pool house exclusively for the individual residents. And second it. Any discussion? All those in favor vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the docket number passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2019-033 for the property located at 2501 Wabash Avenue. Petitioners, the mall at White Oaks LLC and White Oaks 
out parcel LLC. Present zoning classification is S2 Community Shopping and Office District Section 155.031. Requested zoning relief, use variance of Section 155.031, S2 Community Shopping and Office District to permit a B1 Highway Business Service District use, new and used vehicle sales, opened or enclosed, in the S2 Community Shopping and Office District in the areas designated per the attached map, Exhibit B. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is approval limited to the area shown and described in the petition and its exhibits. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission. Chair will entertain a motion. Move to accept the Regional Planning Commission recommendation and the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation. Been moved and second to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation. Correct. Is there a second? Second. Uh, I don't know if uh, someone from White Oaks want to come up and since you're here, like to take advantage of your presence. Anything you'd like to say about the mall and the redevelopment? Absolutely. Um, currently, we are uh, working on a redevelopment plan for the parcel um, in question right now. There are no definitive plans at this time. Um, we are still awaiting um, what the next steps will be. This right now is what we're looking for uh, to work with the Green um, Auto Group uh, to continue to <clears throat> partner with the city and with someone like Green Auto Group in order to continue to promote the mall and the sales in the mall. So. Mm -hmm. I'd uh, happy, be happy to answer any questions that anybody would have about this. This is uh, Clay Emmerich, the mall manager, so. I apologize, mm -hmm. yes. Thank you so much for that. Any questions? Very good. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for being here and thank serving you. on the uh, Convention Visitors Bureau Advisory Group. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. All in favor of the uh, docket number, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the docket number passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2019-034 for the property located at 1203 through 1219 South 7th Street. Petitioners is Springfield Clinic LLP as contract purchaser. Present zoning classification is R5B, general residence and office district section 155.021. Amended requested zoning relief, conditional permitted use pursuant to section 155.021C1. Conditional permitted uses in the R5B accessory off-street parking lots not on the same zoning lot as the use served. 155.183, accessory off-street parking not on the same zoning lot as the use served. A variance of section 155.183C, accessory off-street parking not on the same zoning lot as use served to allow accessory off-street parking to be more than 500 feet walking distance of the nearest general purpose entrance of the facility being served. Section 155.480I, landscape screening and lighting regulations, transitional buffer yard requirement and landscaping to allow the TBY to be three feet instead of the required 10 feet along the west property line and section 155.114B regulations for the location of off street parking facilities to allow parking spaces in the required front yard of 20 feet. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is approval of the petition as originally submitted. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is approval of the petition as amended with the three foot transitional buffer yard. Chair will entertain a motion. Uh, I think we have an additional uh, amendment to this. Okay. Yes, if you'd introduce yourself and the amendment, we'd appreciate it. Uh, I'm Pat Joyce with the law firm of Brown, Hay, and Stevens, uh, legal one of the legal counsels for the Springfield Clinic. And with me is Tom Fitch, who is the senior facilities director at the Springfield Clinic. Uh, <clears throat> Alderman DeSenzo is correct. Uh, uh, after the uh, planning and zoning commission meeting, uh, we were approached and Alderman DeSenzo was approached by some objectors and they were hoping that they could work out something where we would uh, agree not to park in the front yard and agree to uh, uh, keep intact the um, transitional buffer yard and not have it three feet but have it zero feet, which is, what is part of the, the, uh, the zoning ordinance. The clinic after internal discussions decided that uh, 
they want to be a good neighbor to, to the people in the neighborhood. So tonight they've authorized me to withdraw from the petition or the amended petition, the request that uh, uh, for uh, of section 155, 114B variance in regard to parking within the required 20 foot front yard and withdraw the variance request of section 155.480 small one to reduce the transitional buffer yard along the west line of the subject property from 10 feet to zero feet. So what we're requesting tonight is the conditional permitted use to allow the property to be used as an accessory off street parking lot, not on the same zoning lot as the use served, that the main clinic building and some other facilities owned by the clinic in the neighborhood are to the north of this property. And we're also requesting the variance of section 155.183C to allow the accessory off street parking lot to meet more than 500 feet walking distance of the nearest general purpose entrance to the facilities being served. The only one that might be 500 feet away, away is the main clinic building. The clinic has two or three other buildings within 500 feet. So as I say, we're requesting the conditional permitted use for accessory off street parking, and we're requesting the, uh, the variance to be more than 500 feet away. So it's just two of the requests uh, that were in the original petition, and the other two requests we've withdrawn then. So the uh, section 155.480I would be removed and uh, the 10 feet would be uh, mandatory about the west property line. And then the other section 155.114B uh, with regards to the uh, 20 feet, uh, you're eliminating that off street parking facilities to allow spaces. Right. That, those were the final two requests. Right, so we won't okay. park in the front yard and we'll maintain the transitional buffer line. Um, yard along the um, west line, which is yep. the alley. Yep. Very good. Any questions on that? Does that have to be an amendment then? So the motion to remove the uh, final two sections of requested uh, zoning relief, which was section 155.480I, and I'll just read them. Landscape screening and lighting regulations, transitional buffer yard requirement, and landscaping to allow the uh, TBY to be three feet instead of the required 10 feet along the west property line, so that would be removed, as well as section 155.114B request, which was regarding the regulations for the location of off-street parking facilities to allow parking spaces in the required front yard of 20 feet. And that's removed, too. So those would be, both would be removed. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Been moved and second to amend accordingly. All in favor, any discussion on the amendment? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. So on the docket number as amended, any discussion? Further discussion? Um, just one thing. Mm -hmm. This is what happens when neighbors talk to each other and work together and decide to be good neighbors. So I thank you as, as well as the objectors. Um, I, I don't like neighbors to fight and we all have to exist peacefully. So thank you very much for coming back to the table and discussing this with them. I appreciate that. I'm telling you. And we really appreciate uh, Springfield's clinic investment in Springfield, <coughs> both on Wabash and uh, on 6th Street there. So thank you very much. You. It's your 80th anniversary, right? It is. Would you care to say anything? <laughs> anything further? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, 80 years is a long time in Springfield, and um, uh, our neighbors are our patients, so we want to do what we can to take care of them um, any way we can. So we appreciate the thoughts. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the docket number as amended, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The <coughs> voting is now open. And the docket number as amended passes, 10 voting yes, none voting no. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2019-035 for the property located at 2716 South MacArthur Boulevard. 
Petitioner are Andrew and Jennifer Jennings. President's only classification is B1 Highway Business Service Dis District, Section 155.033. Requested zoning relief reclassification to B2 General Business Service District, Section 155.034. If reclassification is not afforded, petitioner requests consideration for a use variance to allow operation of a painting service company in a B1 zoning district. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is denial of the reclassification to B2, but recommends granting of a use variance to allow for the operation of a commercial painting company with non-vehicular outside storage contained within the rear fence area. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Planning, Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission. Chair will entertain a motion. Accept, move to accept the staff recommendations for approval of the use variance. Been moved and seconded to accept the staff recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation for approval. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the docket number passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2019-036 for the property located at 1036 West Washington Street. Petitioner is Jessica Handy. President's zoning classification is R2, single family residence and duplex district, section 155.017. Requested zoning relief, variance of section 155.056, minimum required lot area per dwelling unit to allow the use of a duplex on a lot containing 4,995 square feet of land instead of the 6,000 square feet required. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is denial. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission to deny the petition. Is there a motion? I move that we allow the variance for this property. Second. It's been moved and seconded to allow the uh, zoning variance as requested and seconded. Any discussion? A question, the variance would allow it to come in as a duplex? Yes. Um, was there a recommendation from the Historic West Side Neighborhood Association? Yep, they're here. I think they sent a document in writing too, if you'd like to come up and introduce yourself. Yep. Oh, sure. If you'd state your name and address for the council, we'd appreciate it. Yes, I'm Jessica Handy. I live at 534 West Vine. Um, in March, I bought a home with the intention of renting the basement efficiency unit to um, my foster daughter's mother, who was going through some housing insecurity, just to have a real affordable, stable place for her. And uh, with the intention of rehabbing the upstairs and renting that as a separate unit, um, later learned that just because it's zoned R2, that doesn't mean it has the minimum square footage on the lot to do that. So I'm here requesting the, the variance. Okay, thank you. I would just like to add, mm -hmm. um, I, Jess, if you don't mind, just. Um, so there will be no external modifications to this building. We're not talking about a staircase going outside. The um, efficiency apartment was already established in the home when you purchased it. And um, I would just like to thank you very much for being so responsive. Uh, we certainly welcome and respect landlords who are working to improve their neighborhood and their property. So thank you for that. Thank you. You'd state your name and address for the council. We'd appreciate it. Kirk DeWeese, 716 South Douglas Avenue. I'm here on behalf of the Historic West Side Neighborhood Association. And uh, we did testify uh, at the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Uh, and I'm here to reiterate uh, our opposition to this petition. Um, we, we did submit written testimony, so I hope you can have a chance to review that. Um, this particular petition does uh, propose a significant variation in the lot size. It's about 1,000 square feet short of the requirement. The board uh, of the Historic West Side Neighborhood Association appreciates the intent of the petitioner to duplex the home to provide housing for particular individuals with whom she is personally involved. We are still not sure that this is the best option for that case, especially if there are significant and expensive building code requirements that still must be met. We also understand that there may be other factors beyond the zoning issue which surround this matter. We strongly believe that a social services goal 
should not override the proposed use variance that will apply to the property well into the future. Once given in relation to, excuse me, once given in relation to the property, individual renters may change, as well as ownership and the intention of future owners. We hope that alternative housing option can be explored for the individuals in this case. Although the petitioner canvassed residents of the immediate area and has submitted many form letters of nearby residents in support of the petition, I submit that the canvas was not a comprehensive survey that included much of the information concerns that I have speak, spoken to at the commission and were included in the testimony. It is critical that I underscore the facts that both the staff of the commission, of the regional planning commission and the city traffic engineer recommended the denial of this petition and that the Springfield Planning and Zoning Commission unanimously voted to accept the staff recommendations. The Planning Commission found that the standards of variations are not met. The city traffic engineer reports that there is no additional room on these lots to accommodate off-street parking. Conversion of this single family home and the surrounding homes in this area uh, to duplex would result in over congestion of off-street parking. The petitioner purchased this property at a substantial discount under foreclosure. It previously sold as a single family home for $97,000 in 2014, and then for $97,500 in 2016. The petitioner bought the property for $56,000 with the intent to use it as a duplex without knowledge of the intended uh, use, without knowledge of the lot size requirement. The petitioner re reported to that she naively, and those are her words, failed to understand that it could not legally be operated as a duplex because it fell short of the minimum required lot size. This is another instance that it happens in our area quite a bit, that prospective buyers, they buy properties but aren't fully informed of the land use standards or, in, or limitations and they don't make sure that the sale is conditioned upon a resolution of zoning issues. So the city council is being asked by this petition to excuse another oversight. The area covering the historic West Side Neighborhood Association includes several properties that have been converted from single family owner occupied residence to non owner occupied duplex or multiplex apartments many of which would not meet current zoning standards, but were grandfathered under prior regulations. Our association does not support further relaxing existing standards that invites even more intensive uses than currently exist by other property owners who may seek similar variances. More intensive use generally involves more frequent turnover of residents, increases the number of vehicles, and a need for more parking spaces. The recently adopted comprehensive plan for the city of Springfield emphasizes the need to pr protect and preserve the remaining older resident areas, residential areas represented by our association. It's my hope that you will continue to uphold the provisions of that comprehensive plan which you recently adopted. Thank you. Any questions? Further discussion, Mr. Yes. Alderman McMenamin. I'm real familiar with this neighborhood, having lived in, in the neighborhood when I first came to Springfield. And uh, this is one of those neighborhoods that's kind of on the tipping point. Um, density tends to move the tipping point in the wrong direction. Um, this home was built as a single family home. Um, I'm real familiar with the neighborhood. In fact, this home is adjoins the Cavanaugh historical family home, a very large, beautiful lot where Tom and Bill Cavanaugh grew up. Um, a duplex is going to hinder and downgrade the neighborhood, uh, or potentially can. I know just that's kind of handy, too, because we were neighbors on Lindsay Road, and I know your parents that ran the ice cream shop, so I understand where you're coming from. Um, the good news is that this property can cash flow uh, with a single tenant in there uh, based on your purchase price. It looks like it's in good condition, so I don't think it'll be too damaged if, if uh, the, the recommendation of both staffs were to, were to approve, uh, if, if we were to approve as a council what the staffs, the professional staff recommended, I think unanimous, uh, both votes. So this, the, uh, the variance is, a, you know, what happens with the variance is you might have good intentions, Jessica, but, you know, the subsequent 
um, tenant might not be the, the, the right one and so forth, and then you have downward slide of neighborhoods, and so um, I think uh, the single family home is, is what was intended and should remain that way, Jessica. I would just say, you know, the property sold for $97,000 however many years ago, not too long ago, but it had fell into a lot of disrepair since then. Um, we patched about 18 holes in the drywall. The appliances were moldy. They had speakers ripped out, light fixtures fixed, uh, ripped out, the fireplace facade ripped out. So we've put in about $17,000 worth of rehab in the upstairs. I think we're beautifying the place. I think we're improving the community. And um, we do have four off-street parking places and a basement tenant who doesn't have a car. So I, I don't think off-street parking should be an issue either. But I appreciate that. Alderman Redpath? Uh, obviously, you bought the property that already had the efficiency put into place, is that correct? And you don't plan to improve the footprint on the outside of the building to put any additions on the outside with stairs or an addition to the building. So, you know, I obviously think that this council ought to consider this strongly, that this lady is going to improve this property and, and support it, please. Hello, Woman Turner. Um, I have always believed that Zoning is one of the most important aspects of the job that we do as a city council because it does have a tremendous impact on the neighborhood. And having said that, I think that I have always been of the uh, outlook that I have to trust the uh, council of the alderman who represents that ward because whoever that person is, and in this instance, Alderman Conley would be the best person situated in order to give us advice on what is best for um, her ward. So um, I, su I support you uh, in a yes vote, as I do all aldermen in terms of zoning. Alderwoman Desenzo. I would just like to point out the very real affordable housing problem we have in the city and the fact that uh, Jessica has decided to take this on on her own um, to try to help you know someone that means something to her some someone that means something to her and her foster child. I think this is a commendable effort. Um, no, I don't believe zoning should be all about social services, but in this case, uh, you have my full support and thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. All the woman Conley. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I, I would like to add, so I actually just last night had a meeting with, in a different neighborhood, um, and with um, a church organization and, and neighbors. And, and one of the biggest complaints um, consistently from these neighbors was about absentee landlords, was about landlords who were non-responsive to the needs of the neighborhood, and landlords that they couldn't reach out to and contact. Um, with this property, given the price that it was at, I, I think it's probably highly likely that could have gone to another landlord. I feel very grateful that we have someone who is responsible, who has been extraordinarily responsive and reached out to not just her alderwoman for the property, to the neighbors, to the neighborhood association, and is displaying a lot of willingness to work with everyone. Um, I'm seeing improvements to the front of the, uh, the retaining wall, to the front of that property. I appreciate and respect that. I would hope that we have more landlords who would be as responsive and um, available as, as Ms. Handy has been. So I appreciate your support and ask that we move on with this vote. Is this going to be owner-occupied? I missed that. Sorry. No. No. Okay. So, any other discussion? Just uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, Jessica, thanks for making the internal improvements. I drove by the house last night and uh, studied it carefully. And um, in my opinion, it would cash flow it even at the 50000 plus the 17000 that you put in. Um, so I think the, the council is making a, a mistake here, the way it looks like the vote is going to go. We should... Um, protect our, our neighborhoods, and we, we got to think of the general interest, the neighborhood interest, not just an individual interest that has purchased a home, and that's just the way um, we, we really should consider these things, the general interest, and we've got a neighborhood association here that, that uh, and probably the inner city older, older neighborhood association also, that um, opposes um, this variance request, and I think we're making a mistake by, um, by ignoring um, strong neighborhood recommendations here. 
Any other discussion? Yeah, I resent the fact that the nine aldermen compared to one alderman is making a mistake. We don't you know, know what it's going to be yet, Chuck. Well, you know, we'll see after the vote's over, tell, but the bottom line is, is that every time that something comes up, you have to come up with, we're making a mistake. We're not all speak well. well. I, I, other, that's a personal uh, attack, Mr. Mayor. That's, I think it's, it's a point of order. You it's know, a personal well, attack. I'm not... Any, any other discussion Excuse regarding me. the zoning matter? I just want to say to the young lady, I appreciate you. I like what you're doing. I was a foster kid. I think that's wonderful. And I think sometimes, you know, I get it. We got we got a zoning department. They do a fantastic job. But sometimes we got to look at, you know, the intent of the individual. Right now, today, I can't, you know, we can't be crystal ball readers and look down the future. We try to. But, you know, I, I think that's a good thing. And, you know, I'm willing to, to uh, you know, give you my vote. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes, those opposed vote no, the voting is now open. Voting isn't quite open. And the docket number passes nine voting yes, one voting no. And that concludes our zoning portion of the meeting. Chair will recognize Treasurer Busher for the financial report. Thank you, Marilyn Felder. The corporate fund in the month of July had a beginning balance of nine million. I'm sorry, the corporate fund had a beginning balance in the month of July of six million nine hundred sixty-nine thousand two hundred ninety-one dollars. We took in total receipts of ten million one hundred eighty-two thousand seven hundred ninety-one dollars. We had total disbursements in the month of July of $7,739,815, and the corporate fund ended the month of July with an ending balance of $9,412,267. This concludes my report, Mayor Langfelder. Thank you. Thank you. Chair will entertain a motion to approve the financial report. So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes in the July 23rd, 2019 regular city council meeting and approve the minutes. So moved. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council first reading of ordinances in the record of the city council meeting. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council reading of the consent agenda into the record of this city council meeting. So moved. Second. Yeah. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final passage. So moved. moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the consent agenda passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Agenda number is 2017-103, 2018-110, 2019-008, 2019-232, and 2019-276 remain tabled or in committee. Is there any movement on any of those? Next item on the agenda is number 2019-275, an ordinance to increase the number of Class E liquor licenses by one for Jowd, Inc., doing business as Express Chicken and Shrimp, located at 2023 South 15th Street. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2019-275 on final passage. Um, move to uh, 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 move the uh, to final passage. Sorry. Second. second. The move to approve for final passage and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the ordinance passes nine voting yes, none voting no, and one voting present. Next item on the agenda is number 2019-332, an ordinance accepting proposal number UE20-05 with the Carrollton Bank for CWLP electric line of credit and authorizing the establishment of a revolving line of credit in an amount not to exceed $5 million with an availability period of five years for the Office of Public Utilities. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2019-332 on final passage. So moved. Second. 
Been moved and second. Any discussion? Uh, discussion, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Alderman McMinimum. We had a, a line of credit request, um, the, the preceding one, I think it was two years ago, maybe three years ago, and I had reservations about it then on the basis that uh, we no longer needed a line of credit. Um, this one here is with uh, Carrollton Bank. Previously, we've had it with INB Bank. I would be, um, no to whichever bank comes in. Um, during the time since this ordinance came into the City Council, we've had a financial report from uh, City Water, Light and Power. And what our financial report from the, our utility informed us is that we've got the best cash position um, ever in the last nine years. We're now at $32 million of, of uh, ready cash, and um, that's in May. And uh, Historically, our cash position just increases during the rest of the summer because we're selling electricity. And on top of that, we've, during the, the, the past four years, we've built up our envir environmental fund by $19 million of cash. So I see this as a unnecessary spending. If we ever get to the position where we need a line of credit, from where we're at now, we've got much bigger problems than a $5 million problem. So. Uh, I think this is just an unnecessary, I think the line of credit costs us, uh, I think it's $75,000 a year, and this is a five-year agreement, so we're talking about a quarter of a million dollars that could be put to other uses. I'd also like to point out that we never used to have line of credit for our electric division. I think we first took out a line of credit in 2000. Uh, 11 or 12 when things were going bad. We drew on it for a few years and um, the last draw was uh, in 2000, we began it in 2009, excuse me, last draw was 2012. So um, that's, I just want to explain my rationale, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Uh, oh, Alderman Donlin, you want to? And, and maybe Mr. Kretcher is going to address my question, but I'll go ahead and ask it. Uh, just why does the utility think this is needed? Uh, the line of credit is needed as a safeguard. It would be an unencumbered, uh, dedicated fund of emergency money in the event of a major catastrophe with the utility. We agree that there's money there, okay? However, there are purposes that other aldermen are seeing to, for using some of that money down the road. This is a coal plant. Coal plants are under fire across the nation. We are not paying $75,000. A year ago, this, this month or next month, a year ago, at this time, this time a year ago, we were paying 500 times what the amount of the cost for this uh, current line of credit would be, the one that's under consideration tonight. Uh, uh, just about a year ago, we reduced the cost of the line of credit with, when it was at 15 million uh, by two thirds. This request would reduce what's left by 40 percent. So we'd be pretty low, significantly lower than what we were paying a year ago, and even during the, the months after the uh, reduction last fall. Uh, this line of credit uh, expires on September 1st, and this, it is, it, it, we, yes, there is a non-use fee. It is relatively small compared to what we were previously paying for the other one, uh, but it is still gives us insurance, and if we continue in a good stead, we can, we can cancel it. We can increase it or cancel it at the will. About 18,000 a year. 18. 18. 18 a year now will be the, the result of this where we were paying significantly more. So it's not $75,000 no, a year. No. It was, it, it, at one point it was more than 75, but it's not. We reduced it down to 30, and now it will be with this 18. Thank you, Director, for that clarification. Quite all right. I appreciate knowing about the uh, insurance. It's essentially an insurance policy, a financial insurance policy, is what you're saying. Basically. Thank you. Alderman Harrow. And I'd like to point out uh, the environmental and uh, environmental rebate fund that we currently have. Uh, that cannot be used for anything other than environmental use, or it has to be rebated back to the customer. It can't be used as as day to day cash. I believe that's how we set the fund up uh, when we put it in place. So, you know, you can say, well, we've got that on hand. That is not to be touched. It's, it's strictly for environmental issues that we know we've got to deal with, such as ash ponds and, and whatnot. Alderman Proctor? No, that was my question on the fee. Thanks for answering that. I said 18000 Yes, sir. All right, thanks. 
Alderman Redpath. So this is a funding authority, and the spending authority still has to come back to the city council. Basically, we're going to come back with a with a with a report as to what happened at the plant, and what's going to what, what's going to happen, and what's an approximate cost. Is. Executive authority from the mayor takes over, but it will always come back to us. Is that clear, Mayor? Uh, I believe they just follow the regular authority of spending, which uh, correct under a hundred thousand dollars. But things don't happen at the plant. <laughs> Big things don't happen at the plant for under hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> nothing, nothing happens for under hundred thousand dollars at that plant. Mm -hmm. well, we, Red Pat, just the ordinance before you is simply approving the availability of the line of credit. Exercise of that line of credit would have to come via separate ordinances. Perfect. That's exactly what I thought. Thank you. And it's going to be reviewed each year, so it says five years, but we can cancel after a year, and if so, can, what's it, the cost? It, 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 I'm going to assume that's at the, 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 I'm sorry, did you say what's the cost? Can we, two questions. Can we cancel after one year? It's my understanding that we're going to review it each year. And then uh, if that's the case, is there a cost for cancellation? That's not my understanding that there is a cost. There's no cost. There's no cancellation for you. Okay. And then the other question I have, then, Alderman Conley. Uh, uh, the previous bank had been with us through the dark times, you know, where we couldn't get a line of credit. Correct. And the question was, why didn't we stay with them? Well, this was an RFP. Mm -hmm. Because it's a large amount of money, we're not going to come before the council and just say, we're deeming it out. The only people who can do that is you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there was an RFP. Uh, this particular bank came in lowest. I have had some conversation with the uh, uh, bank uh, associated with the current line. They were interested in what was the status of the relationship with them in the city. I told them that we were pleased with their activities and what they have helped us do, not only with the line of credit, because when that line of credit uh, was acquired, there was a need and it was difficult to get. But it, unfortunately, in this particular situation, their, their proposal wasn't the best. I told them that we certainly enjoyed their services and would, would look forward to continuing services. And if something else came up, we certainly want them to be involved. So they were very pleasant. They were, they were reasonably pleased with it. Certainly no one likes to lose an opportunity to make money. Alderman Conley. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Actually, mm -hmm. you and Alderman Redpath asked my questions. Any other discussion? Uh, Mr. Mayor, discussion. McMinnon. I study these documents pretty carefully, and Ken, maybe you weren't thinking you'd have to come up here tonight uh, to talk about this, but I mean, it's pretty clear from the bidding sheets that um, they rated each of the three banks, and it says um, the, uh, the total sample cost, cost without borrowing. It's for uh, Carrollton Bank, it was $77,000 per year. Cost without borrowing from for UCP it says two uh, hundred and fifty thousand, and cost without borrowing for the uh, third bank IMB was going to be one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. That's a five-year figure. Alderman. You believe what? That's a five-year figure. Well, okay, let's go with the five-year figure then. But um, but Carrollton has Carrollton has the best the best the best deal on this one. I guess the question is: Is it seventy-five thousand a year or fifteen thousand or eighteen thousand dollars a year? Because eight. evidently the uh, the the way it was typed up was stating seventy-five thousand a year. No, it's a seventy-five for the total. Five for total. The Did other the other banks are the 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 interest rate has more basis points than Carrollton. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all using an index and so forth. So it's it's eighteen a year. Mm -hmm. We're down to five million, not the fifteen, but but still, uh, it's it's the best deal as our analysts look at it, and I think we are uh, willing to go with it. It's sixteen seven a year. Well, so any other depends on what, exactly what, what how the index runs. But go ahead. Any other discussion or comments? I think the sheets are ambiguous and unclear, Mr. Mayor. Noted. Anything else? All those in favor of the motion to approve, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Voting is now open. And the uh, ordinance passes nine voting yes, none voting no, and one voting present. Next item on the agenda is number 2019-365, an ordinance annexing certain described properties located in Ward 3 of the City of Springfield. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2019-365 on final passage. So moved. Second. Good move and second. Any discussion? Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, we do have some people signed up. 
any discussion from the council before we open the floor? I, 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 Alderman Hanauer. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, one of the things that concerns me is, uh, are we looking at these parcels and, and that w the holes in the donut and seeing what we need to do as a city, kind of looking at a return on investment or anything like that? Or are we just looking at blanketing? You know, we're not looking at, well, this, these streets need redone or whatever. I, I just was wondering if, if, if you got, if the administration's looking at that as they're doing this, because you know, I would hate to annex something in and then it, it cost us a lot of money to uh, fix up things and, and where we've got places in the city that we currently own that still need fixed up. So, yeah, actually, the approach has been more of a planning aspect, uh, what makes sense. And Nate Bottom probably could speak to this better than anybody with regards to uh, South Grand and the holes in the donuts with regards to that. But what we did annex in, uh, you can, uh, with lake properties, we ran into situations where roads were going unrepaired. Did we know we'd have the capacity to repair those roads? Not necessarily, but uh, we did bring them in and uh, prioritize those roads. And uh, from the, that prioritization, they moved up the uh, prioritization list. And I think Alderman Redpath can speak uh, volumes to the condition they were in versus what they're in today. And so. Uh, it will lend its opportunity. They'd be uh, considered just like all our other roads or sidewalks, uh, depending on the need, uh, be in that prioritization list. But I don't know if you. That's want correct. To add and to then, that. per the Illinois compiled statutes, to um, whenever you annex a uh, piece of property, it goes to the far side of the road. And so we have most of these roads already, and we're just closing the holes in the donuts. So it will actually help us out in the long run because we already have jurisdiction over the roads majority of them. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? We'd open up the floor. First to sign up was uh, Paul Lejeune. State your name and address for the council. We'd appreciate it. Yes, Mayor. My name is Paul Raphael Lejeune. Uh, I want to say hello and good evening to the council and the corporate council. I'm originally from Boulder, Colorado. I've made this my town. I started selling cars in 1991. I'm kind of nervous, so I'm just going to read straight off my sheet, and I hope that's okay. Sure. Today, I seek a chance to change my business model. To achieve that goal, I have followed all lawful procedures. Presently, an active CPU, conditional permitted use application, is in process. Uh, it is due to come to completion in approximately 19 days. That'll be September uh, 10th. I hope to work with each and every one of you to achieve a reasonable plan to resolve and share similar goals together, namely to improve Clear Lake and prevent the area from becoming any more blighted. Having been on the street as a used car, uh, used automobile dealer for 24 of the last 29 years, I will assure each of you that uh, many people are struggling on the street. Clear Lake is trending downward. There are at least nine vacant business properties without any business presence in five short blocks on either side of me. Actually, three blocks one way, two blocks the other. That would be the 2200 block to the 2900 block. I'm at 2601. This was once a thriving area, active. My plan is to support the street in a new and exciting business. I would like to enjoy a lifetime of over 5,000 customers at my location in a different manner. To achieve that goal, I have followed all lawful procedures that must be considered. The conditional public use application process is working its way through our great democracy. New to this application process, uh, my first instructions were to file an application with the Sangamon County Zoning Office on 9th Street. Trustin Harrison is a complete professional. His wonderful staff was very helpful in preparing a proper application. These matters are legal and official, so the assistance of some is something to certainly appreciate as a citizen. Next, I received a recommendation for the conditional permitted use by mail from the Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission. So I was learning my way on the fly. 
It was suggested to inform the county board member in the area, Rose Ruzik, who actually lives down the same Forest Avenue, that is 2601 Clear Lakes Side Street. Rose is a pleasant person and very easy to talk with. I then proceeded to call 28 of the 29 county board members one at a time and more than half supported, uh, expressed immediate support. For this, I thank them all, especially those who did return my call when I missed them initially. I am thankful to be in the county and I enjoy this type of professional respect from our elected county board. Next was review of the application from the Sangamon County Zoning Board of Appeals. Upon their review, the plan was approved. Five board members in favor, zero board members against. In an effort for transparency and mutual recommendation, I now appear before this council to fight for my livelihood. I understand that this city has its business goals and works with the county in most all circumstances. To appreciate uh, the difference between new construction type models of business built from scratch and other local properties like mine. I'm in an old shell station, folks. Very solid block building, new roof, but it certainly has uh, existing limitations because there's an existing structure there. Then I received an annexation notice from the city. So next, I attempted to uh, find instructions how to work with the city in the case of any future annexation. I called City Hall. I was eventually forwarded to Bob Lowe. He was professional. And after hearing my plea, Mr. Lowe described a clean and positive outcome to pursue. Start over with my phone calls. Have a reasonable discussion with all of the city council. So that is what your good citizen pursues today. I had attempted to reach each and every one of you. Uh, regrettably, only three were uh, able to be reached. I did not speak last week because my intention is not to be in a battle with the city. It is not good for anyone involved, let alone for the other 100,000 citizens like myself to doubt the merit of the city intention or procedure. It was clearly told to me uh, not to challenge the council, if at all possible, by two separate attorneys who knew the ropes and the customs with regard to achieving multiple goals within the city. Like earlier, I love Springfield. I'm heavily invested having procured a large number of customers in Springfield's east side. So, uh, let's see here. So I reached out. In sales, details of a conversation are important. My word is my bond, and it always has been, and it's my bond with the public. When I lose public trust, I don't do very well in sales. I was told the annexation would not go into force until the first of the year by both the mayor and the corporate council. This would allow for if the amended. current political body to complete my application and the county business model perfect for my location to proceed. This being my third meeting in as many weeks, I've worked very hard to understand this process. My concern today is the council appears a little short on discussion. Today I heard a lot of discussion, but the other two meetings, no discussion. I am truly surprised that these votes are made and all agree so readily. It is troubling to wonder how these ideas move so quickly when they affect so many people and so many issues. In truth, the appearance is absolutely troubling, to be honest with you. I believe that the whole town would feel better if we can operate in civil discourse and improve Clear Lake and all future annex properties like myself with a similar type of professionalism that have become that we've all become to accustom uh, we've become accustomed to under county jurisdiction. No one should be excluded from an honest effort to work with their local or new governing body. To proceed with immediate annexation, in my case, will severely disenfranchise my business application. The Regional Planning Commission is full of professionals who do not operate in a politically charged environment. The Zoning Board of Appeals operate as an independent body to assess properties long under their responsibility. Point of order, Mr. Lejeune, the, winding down. We've got I'm almost done. These bodies, in truth, are much more capable of nonpartisan decision making, and their opinion should carry a lot of weight and merit. 
or why are they paid professionals? It was then suggested that a few people control the city council. I asked, how could that be? The answers were too ugly to even be made public in this forum. But if this is a true, if that is true, if that's true, and I don't believe it's true, but if it's true, this is not fit for public service. Please order, allow I'm for the time sit necessary. here and listen to you <laughs> badmouth this council. Seconds. I'm, not I'm trying just to not going to do it. Well, I Your five right. minutes are up. Well, Please that's, allow that's for the fair. time necessary. He's, he's past time. This is ridiculous. I've got about one more minute if you can okay. stand it. I'm talking as fast plane. as I can. We I apologize. It. But please the allow the for the time necessary to have a discussion in committee and make a fair and unbiased business decision concerning my general business three commercial street. The current feeling received by my experience is that it is a very difficult process to understand and participate in effectively, so I do apologize, sir. I hate to think that no citizen can really and truly do well unless they have political affiliation and friends in high places. Oh, I hope uh, that all of, I I think hope that all of you work for the people yeah, I think so. that's that's a, that's in offensive. the town, yeah. not just your ward. When local officials like yourselves take upon these responsibilities, I would like to believe it's your intention to work for each and every individual that may need the help of the council in this great city. I do not seek any special favor. I realize some parties are not excited by adult beverages or gaming entertainment. This should not be a reason to reject a discourse on an issue. The most important thing for the council to do is allow for transparency, allow for a discussion in committee as a matter of course on important issues to your citizenry. Please give no impression of misleading statements. Allow the governing authorities and decisions to carry the proper gravity of their invested position. Anything else, anything less is truly disheartening to business owners and property owners and citizens of the entire Sangamon County. I appreciate you uh, coming forward and uh, speaking. Uh, with regards to uh, January 1st, that's uh, typically what I told you, I think, was I believe that was the case. It would have to be amended. And uh, I believe that's how the code is, or the, the ordinance is written, was it goes into effect immediately. Unlike, unlike our previous annexations that I spoke to, which was lake properties. That was calendar year. And so that's why I thought originally it was. So I told you it had to be amended. And so that's the whole point of that. So if there's an amendment, then uh, we could amend it and it goes into effect January 1. But if there's no amendment, the way the ordinance is written, it takes effect immediately. Is that correct? Yeah, just, just very briefly, you may remember when the, when, when the council has adopted ordinances that have multiple or many uh, parcels or properties, that sometimes can create an issue with the assessor's office. Therefore, to try to accommodate that in the past, uh, for example, with the lake properties, that was made effective January 1st calendar year, tax year. And so the thought process was that in the same instance, that might be an option if the council decided to do it. However, the lake ordinance was amended to provide for the January 1st so that there would not have to be assessments in mid-year because of changing taxing bodies. So that is an option for the city council now if it chooses to do so, meaning that the annexation can be effective at a later date in order to be simply because of the uh, number of parcels involved. However, that is a, an amendment that would be required and a, uh, it's a legislative decision making the effective date when the annexations are effective. Otherwise, the statute provides that uh, annexation ordinances are effective upon passage unless the effective date is amended. And you may recall with the lake ordinances with so many uh, parcels, that's what ended up happening. And when it was heard at committee, anybody can speak at that point in time or come up at the end like uh, you were here previously, you can always come up and speak. I always allow individuals to speak at any time and express their opinion and as you said, you were nervous or what have you? I was you, pretty but, nervous. Mm -hmm. I had already called the... Uh, you seem pretty this, polished, though. Well, I, I wrote it up this time so that I could mm -hmm. read a mm -hmm. speech and not have to and you did speak well. from the cuff. Right. 
I did contact Frank Lesko's office. I did tell them I wanted to speak at the two meetings in a row. At the first meeting, I came forth, and I just kind of froze up. So I said, hey, can I get everybody's phone number? None of you returned my call. Mm -hmm. So then I thought, hmm, I better just get a hold of the mayor and the corporate council myself, which I did. I thought, okay, take the advice of your attorneys. Do not go against the council. It's not the good plan. So it appeared in... Well, you're you not and I spoke to... only three minutes before mm -hmm. the meeting. I thought, okay, I'm not going to challenge these people. That's not my forum. Um, today I'm here oh, it, I with a plea. Your I returned your phone, I returned yeah. your phone call but also. I got here, three return here's, calls. I would, uh, my advice to you or anybody else, how I do it with the council, give them the information. They're here to provide a decision based on the information they receive. And so, you know, people, they don't win all the time. So when they don't win... They, oh, the fix was in or whatever. That's, that's their opinion. Everybody has their own opinion. But uh, the way we approach it is provide each and every elected official all the information possible so they can make the informed decision. Because when they go out, doesn't matter what alderman or what mayor or who it is, when we vote on an issue, we have to justify that decision. So it's always in anyone's best interest. I guess I'm going against your attorney's advice is to provide as much information as possible so the elected officials, doesn't matter if it's United States, state, or local, they can make that informed decision because that's what it's all about, making the informed decision to do what's in the best interest. And I'd put this city council up against any form of government because they do look at that. We just saw it uh, with regards to the last zoning case. And so that's what it's all about is listen to our constituents, what we feel is the best, uh, time will tell on those decisions in the future, and that's why we are annexing. I think you pointed out our case very good. Nine vacant properties, that's not acceptable anywhere. We have them all over the town. We're trying to work on that. Clear Lake, one of the, that's one of our main corridors coming in. And people say, why don't you beautify it? Well, because they're not in the city. People don't understand that. It's in the city of Springfield uh, by name, but not within the corporate limits. So we cannot provide our resources to beautify that area. <clears throat> But we intend to do that. How long that will take? It depends on those resources, but that's going to be the focus. And I told you, I said, I would still continue. I, I put myself in your shoes. I'd say, I said, I'd continue through that county process. Because if it does get amended, then January 1st is the timeline. And so you want to go through that process. I'd still go through the process regardless what action takes today, uh, you know, just to go through it. And so, uh, but other than that, I don't know if anybody else has any questions of the individual, Paul? or Alderman Donald for Paul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, I don't have a question of the speaker, but I will uh, respond to a couple things he said. Uh, I, I didn't return your call, sir, because you called and got me when I, when I answered the phone and we spoke for about 20 minutes. Uh, that's a fact. And uh, three, you, three parties you, you, and I, you and I call. spoke. So uh, I just said the majority just to say that we that. all didn't return your call. Well, I didn't need to because we spoke. And uh, secondly, uh, you know, Mr. Mayor, you, you hit on something that's very important. And I don't care what the topic is. We've sat in this room time and time again. Look at the clock now. It's almost 7 o'clock. After 8, after 9 o'clock at night. And people say, why was your meeting so long? And, and you're, this is from someone. I happen to teach a course to local government officials throughout the state on how to run an effective meeting. And it says, and I'm one that I like to keep things moving along. It's no secret. You know, I get the honor of being a chair because it's my turn about, about every nine months. And... Uh, and, you know, I like to keep things moving along. But somebody said, why, Jim, why was the meeting so long? Why was the meeting last night so long? You were the chair. I said, because we had issues that we needed to discuss and debate. And a lot of times, believe it or not, things that become for this count, before this council, we've not seen before. And people, people call and they ask, Alderman, how can you allow this to, you know, how can you allow this to happen? I said, this was introduced. We haven't seen it before. And we're going to debate it, and we debate it in committee. Uh, some things move through, through committee process uh, quickly. Some do not, as we all have experienced from time to time again. And I was called by a member of the media today. Happens to be wearing orange. I won't say who it is. <laughs> uh, she asked me, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a meeting coming up. This, there's a meeting this evening. And, and uh, what do you think the hot topic's going to be? And my answer was this particular ordinance. I knew we would be discussing it. And anyway, that's all I have. It's just a statement, not a question, but I think it's important to clarify those things because to say otherwise, someone's not paying attention to what we're doing because our meetings don't last five minutes like some of these other local governments. Mm -hmm. we, we debate things, we talk about things, and we're all passionate about it, needless, needless to say. Alderwoman DeSenta. Um, respectfully, you don't know the discussions we have 
with each other, with community members, with people who call us and say, you know, please annex this or please don't annex this or whatever the situation is. So whether we talk to you or not, we're still gathering information. Um, I didn't call you back. I have a full-time job that, um, that is very demanding. So I did not return your call. Um, I'm not even going to apologize for it because I had the information I needed. And um, you know, to say that we don't have discussion, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. There are people in this room I talk to almost every day. Um, three meetings is not a good gauge of what goes on in these chambers. Well, I'll and apologize for not knowing any of you enough to have long conversations in actuality. I, and I can only just say like this old thing from the car business. You sell a good car, they tell a couple people. You sell a bad car, they tell every single person they know for the rest of their lives. So the perception is difficult to stomach um, from my standpoint. And I'm hoping that the Regional Planning Commission and the Zoning Board of Appeals information carries as much weight as it did for the other 10 issues you just went over and, and nine of them got a 10 to zero vote and one got a nine to one vote. And every one of those that you mentioned off had the same recommended recommendations I'm personally carrying right now. And I would just hope that that would be a strong consideration for this council. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Mayor. For the speaker. Um, it, just a question. Mm -hmm. uh, so my understanding is, is that what you would like to do with your property eventually is, is have a gaming facility. That is correct. Okay. Is, is there any reason for you to believe that you could not bring that petition back uh, should your property be annexed into the city? Well, I had a very difficult time um, getting that message through with Mrs. Turner. She didn't, she appeared to be kind of like in a prohibitionist stance and I, and we had a long conversation. I'll, I'll give her the, uh, some credit. She showed up at the car lot and we spoke, but prohibition's long over. That's a hundred years ago. This is a legal business model I'm after. It's not illegal. The county thinks it's a great model for the area. If I was out on the west side of town, I could build any building I wanted. I could do all kind of different things. I, but I would say that's probably not true. Not true. Well, you could Living ask anyway. You side. would start from scratch, and you would have something like that. Okay, I, can I, and I'm but, sorry. I, I understand. So what I, I guess my, my point is is that this annexation is something that for the, the greater good of the city, we are trying to close holes in the city so that we can provide services. So that, um, you know, I, I don't know that I've seen the county out fix, fixing those little patches of road for you. Our concern is that we provide a smooth, beautified entrance into our city from all approaches. And that is not a comment on or disparagement of your of your property or your business. Have you seen my business? I have seen your business. I'm very familiar with it. And I will tell you. I paint the curbs more than shell. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I, I guess I just... Um, I respect that you came in. I, I wish you would have taken some time prior to tonight to talk to the council as a whole because I think it's in, in a lot of instances in a situation like this, it's good for us to all hear the same message. And um, you know, I would have appreciated that. I also was not able to talk to you. Um, I had other family obligations. Um, I would hope in the future that you would understand that we are people with lives, and just because you don't get a call back in your time zone, your time frame, because I believe you called me this weekend, um, right before this vote, um, that does not mean that I'm on the take or that I'm, I'm, you I know, no subject to no wait. Though. I'm not finished. Yeah. That doesn't mean that I'm, a, I'm, I follow some sort of puppet master. Oh, is the requirement. Master. So I, I just, I want you to know, it's it's very important to us as city councils, and I have respect for everyone sitting around this horseshoe, um, that we behave in a manner that supports each other and it, at heart supports our city. So I, I appreciate you tried to reach out to us. I wish it had been at one of the well, I'm multiple meetings the, prior to tonight. Well, I'm curious what the rush is on it. You make delays, you make amendments, you do all these things all the time. Why can't you have a little discussion, let the little 19 days go by? We've got a whole lifetime to keep doing more business with each other on the street. I've been there 28 years. I mean, uh, what's what's two more weeks? That's what I would ask. The Zoning Board of Appeals is, is very excited about my business plan. The Regional Planning Commission thought it was a great fit. So to me, that should carry some weight. And I'm sorry that I was basically too much of a political neophyte to, I mean, do a, a good job for myself. But I will say this in, in response. If I can't pull it off, 
it's going to be very difficult for any citizen because I've made like 50 or 100 phone calls to, to work this process through. So if it's a mousetrap that nobody can get through, the perception is not going to be pretty for the city, especially if you're going to go after nine more wards in a row. I mean, you've got to... We want to work together as people. We don't want to work against each other. I'm not against any one of you. Not not in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't sound Vice that way. Versa. It doesn't sound that way at all. So, all of them well, I, would, I want to very much apologize for any personal insult that anyone might have felt from uh, my prepared speech. But when you don't you really know what's... stop talking. When okay. you don't really know what's going on, then you sort of get yourself a little bit confused and you just do the best you can. All of them in Turner? Um... Two things. The, the first thing I want to do is I want to address the uh, zoning ordinance. I think that the mayor alluded a minute ago about the reason why we were coming forward with this um, zoning ordinance. And if you, um, some of you were not here before, but about three years ago, we brought forward the same ordinance uh, in order to bring in those I I areas holding the donuts that bring them in, into the city. The, the vote failed. Um, and then over the course of time, we started annexing other areas in the city. We did a lot of annexations in Ward 1. We did a lot of annexations, I believe, in Ward 10 and a few others throughout the city. And so the mayor and I talked, and we thought that the climate was, was good mm -hmm. and that this would be a good time to bring back this, this um, um, annexation ordinance. And I will tell you, out of all of the annexation ordinances that have gone forward and been approved, I believe that this is one that truly fits the reason, uh, truly fits the most urgent reason to annex properties because these are hole in the donut properties for which the city <coughs> provides a lot of services just because of where they're located that we do not get compensated for. They're not included within our budget. That's the first thing. The second thing is is that these, uh, we're talking about properties that are, are um, major thoroughfare entryways into the city. We have, uh, on my eight, almost nine years now on this council, and prior to my tenure here, we have, we as a city, have moved to do a lot of, of upgrades, beautification, some on our own, some working in concert with um, the state of Illinois, in order to provide our tourists with a pleasant experience from the minute they get off I-55 or I-72 as they move throughout the city. Uh, Springfield is a tourist town. We, uh, a lot of our budget and money that we operate on is based on tourism, and we want to provide a pleasant experience. It's difficult for us to do that because on these entryways, we have uh, a stretch, a block stretch that's in the city, a block stretch that's not, a block stretch that's in the city. So we can't do anything in a cohesive or comprehensive m manner in terms of cleaning up beautifying or even maintaining those entryways. It's, it's extremely, extremely difficult. And if you travel along Clear Lake, if you travel along South Grand, if you travel, you will see the evidence of that because we have areas that, are, are, that we've been working on to upgrade and clean up, and then you have a blighted area and along that way. We can't do anything to address that because those are not properties that we have that we have ownership of or that we can avail those property owners of city resources. That's the second thing. The third thing is that um, we all know that uh, the east side of Springfield is in dire need of economic development. And uh, we have all been, well, not all of us, some of us have been working very hard to change that. But in order to move economic development in a cohesive and comprehensive manner, we need to be able to have some control over those properties, again, so that we can work cooperatively with those um, landowners. And we can't do that if they're not in the city. We can't offer them resources. We can't work with them. We can't do anything in a, a cohesive and comprehensive manner in terms of economic development or even planning purposes because those properties are not are not within the city. I think that 
this is an opportunity, annexation is an opportunity for the city, but it's also an opportunity for property owners because once they are part of the city of Springfield, that provides them with an opportunity to avail themselves of the resources that the city has available to them. You know, and, and I will tell you a story. Last time when we, when we had this annexation ordinance, there were uh, several people who lived on Forest Avenue that came and they were all upset. No, 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 I don't want to annex. No, 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 no. I'm in, I'm in Springfield Township. My services are great. I don't want to annex. I don't want anything to do with the city. Okay, that's fine, and, and, it, and, it, and the, the ordinance failed. However, shortly after that, there was a change in elected officials in Springfield Township. And because of that change, there was a significant change in the delivery of some services. And we saw there, there was a decline. And then all of a sudden, all of those people were calling. Why can't we get annexed in? I want to get annexed into the city now. I want to get annexed into the city now. Because there were services that they needed that they were not getting from that township government. So what happened? We were in a, we were in a terrible situation. We were in a situation where we have a street where a portion of the block is in the city, a portion of the block is in township. So as, a, as an elected official, a, a person who represents part of, part of that street, I can't allow people to, you know, not have limbs picked up, not have trash picked up, not have all those things happen. So the uh, city of Springfield, Public Works, went out on several occasions and did the cleanup. That's city services. That's, that's, budget, that's money that's budgeted for the city of Springfield. That's manpower hours. That's the reason why these hole in the donut areas need to come under the comprehensive umbrella of the city of Springfield so that we can then budget for those types of things and we know how we need to, and, and then our city departments, uh, usually either uh, Department of Public Works or CWOP, then they can appropriately allocate their manpower hours and their budgeting when, when they're uh, working on, on the annual budgets. So there are real reasons why we need to do this annexation. It's not a power grab. It's not that we want to take something from someone. It's, it's because of real, out, real comprehensive, cohesive planning and budgeting and the uh, appropriate allocation of services and resources that we need to move forward with these annexations. That's the first thing. The second thing I want to do is I want to um, address some of the comments that were made by the speaker. Uh, I, don't, I, I think from everyone around the horseshoe knows that a lot of what he was saying was a not so veiled attempt at conversations that he's had with me. I, I own that, I accept that. Um, I think that there were a lot of things that were said that were not quite true. Um, there, when I, I sat on the county board for 10 years. When the uh, planning commission and when those people meet, they, they don't have the ability to tell someone what's going to happen or what they think is good. They have the ability to work things up and then present it to whatever committee or uh, for them to make that decision. That's, that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, this is an area that I am extremely familiar with. The very first place that my husband and I actually, uh, to put some context around it, yesterday we celebrated our 42nd wedding anniversary. So I will say 42 years ago, I moved into an apartment that a fourplex actually that was about three blocks from this area. Um, I lived there for quite a while. I raised children there, and and actually when I bought a house, the same house I live in now, I moved about four blocks away. So I know the area. I've seen the area in its heyday. I've seen its decline, and I have worked very hard. As a, as a member of the county board and city council in order to 
uh, try to have a resurgence of that area. Um, so the person who represents that area now, as Mr. Lejeune said, is Rose Ruzzi. Um Rose and I talk often because we share places that we represent. And I will tell you that um, Rose Ruzick is the county board member that represents that area. I've had conversations with her. I've had conversations with another county board member that represents the area just adjacent to that. Neither of them are in support of video gaming on that spot. And the reason why the three of us who represent that area are not in favor of video gaming is not because I don't like alcohol, it's not because I don't like gaming. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with any of those. It has everything to do with what I perceive to be a negative impact on an area that is beginning to thrive. If you, it, if you look at where his location is, in a half a mile to a mile um, radius, there are 12 places to buy alcohol, 12. There are 12 or more places That's for video. I, I've walked it, I've counted them. 12 places to I buy alcohol. I would like to ask you to Excuse me, this. please don't correct, yeah, please don't interrupt me. There are 12 places to buy alcohol, there are 12 places to engage in video gaming. It's, you know, it, and I just think that that is a saturation. Uh, and, and this is not anything that is directly targeting um, this gentleman, if, I don't know, uh, Corporation Council in the Mirror will tell you, probably a year, year and a half ago, Save-A-Lot Grocery Store, which is directly across the street from his business, came to the council and wanted to introduce alcohol sales in, the, in their grocery store. And I was opposed to that, and the reason why I was opposed to it is because I didn't feel like there needed to be another introduction of alcohol sales in an area that was already saturated. So um, I feel like my job as an, my job as an elected representative is to act in a manner that is beneficial to those individuals that I represent. No one's gonna agree with everything I do. You don't agree with, with um, my point of view. And that's fine, because nobody's going to agree with anybody all the time. So my job is not to have everybody agree with me. My job is to act in, in a manner that I think is beneficial to, the entire, to, uh, to everyone, and then be able to explain my position in a manner that I believe everyone, even in their disagreement, can respect. And I believe that that's exactly what I have just done. May I Thank respond, you. Mayor? Uh, directly to me. Yes, sir. So it was mentioned that there are 12 places to sell alcohol and gaming on Clear Lake Avenue. I would say that is absolutely a falsehood. The truth of the matter is you've got 709 Liquor Store, you've got a gas station uh, called Casey's, you've got I think two the gas stations. Was a radius, not a, right. not on you got two right. gas stations up there on the corner of Dirksen Parkway. Though uh, that, I think there's a total of five places selling alcohol of any kind on Clear Lake. That would be a more accurate number. And then there are only two gaming opportunities on Clear Lake Avenue. That's an absolute fact. And that would be 709 Liquor Store, and that would be Mario's Pizza. So I would be curious um, how you can come up with a number like 12. That's not I think the case. it was the radius, mile radius around that area. Well, Clear Lake doesn't start until you get to a certain point. So if we're talking about Clear Lake, then then that would not be a that would not be a truthful statement that would be a but to me you know saturated i think video gaming is saturated i mean really if we want to go back way back when it started if i was in this chair at that point in time the only ones who would have been allowed to have it are bars because it's 21 and older entertainment period mm -hmm. no restaurants no gas stations mm -hmm. but that horse is long gone and so Alderman Turner's right. You have to take a look at, you know, 
What we get knocked on is for signage, everything else. So if you're an outsider, you came from Boulder, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you came in, and we're about ready to venture down Boulder Avenue with marijuana. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, I that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the entity we're going to look at because I talked to the chief, and there's grave concerns. We don't want to... Uh, what's happened here with video gaming specifically, just look at the SJR. They had a... Uh, uh, a uh, piece in there, it showed Springfield was always number one in gaming, number one in revenues. Well, now we're number one in sh machines, dropped down to number two. So we plateaued on with regards to that. The reason the county probably wanted it or said they would want it, and who knows, maybe they didn't know, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not going to guess, they'd have to justify their decision because they're not in the city. You know, it's the county. They're probably looking at revenues just like everybody else is. And so, but, you know, that's a matter of uh, perception. You know, 12 might be too much for all the woman Turner, maybe not for somebody else. For me, it might be three. So that's just everybody's own opinion. What's the saturation point with regards to that? So we could discuss that all night with regards to that. But like I said, I'd encourage you to continue on through your process with regards to the county, uh, with regards to this annexation. I don't know if you have any further comments well, on I this. Well, I'd like to finish commenting on a few of those things that she mentioned. Just don't make personal attacks. I, I apologize for that. I, I, it's order. not my need. Real quick, okay. how, how many more people do we have to speak on this? Because uh, with all due respect, this gentleman has, has taken up a half hour and we're, we're, we're dealing with a five minute, you know, yeah. I mean, at some point in time, the, the question's going to get called if we continue down this avenue. I think it's tell you that right now. I think uh, the reason I let people speak is what was brought up tonight. I mean, every time, oh, we allow people to speak. That's what it's all about. And so I we're not we've, accused of hiding things or anything of that nature. But, you know, his is... I take it this is your livelihood. This is my livelihood, right. sir. I'm so I'd let you wrap it up. Lake more than anybody in this room by far. Okay. Um, and I would like to say there are two gaming places. None of them are a pure gaming. One's a bar. One's a restaurant. Mm, the little blue hair old ladies, they don't always want to go in a bar. They don't always want to go to the restaurant. They just might want to go in there and just kind of spin the wheel for a half hour on their lunch or what, something like this. So that's the business model I'm pursuing. Another thing that came up was the beautification of Springfield. And I want to make a comment on that and then I'll be happy to finish. And that was uh, when I was across the street about 12 years ago at the 2412, uh, where it's the 55 Chevy high in the sky. And I spent eight years there and did a ton of business from the corner. Got a notice from the city. You can't hang any banners. You can't have any signs. You can't advertise your cars the way you want to. I thought, wow, this is outrageous. So that is a different time I made it in front of the, the council meeting. And I asked them, what's your motivation to this? And it was something similar to Mrs. Turner's uh, comment they said. We're going to take the busy out of Clear Lake. I said, that's a very interesting plan you have because this is a business commercial boulevard and busy and business are root words of each other. So I would caution this council to take the business out of your B3 zone commercial properties. Where are you going to sanction business if it can't be sanctioned on a commercial highway 97, 125, 25,000 cars a day? You mentioned the tourists. That's who I'm after. I'm trying to wrap the inside of my little building with some log siding and have an Abe Lincoln themed fun place to go. Some true entertainment. Clear Lake has no entertainment of any kind and I think the people on that end of town deserve some. You can go right up and down Grandview. There's not a vacant place on the entire street. Not a single one. Every one of those businesses is doing well. So I would say don't worry about the risk I'm going to take on. If the, if the market is saturated, that will be determined by the market. That's the American way. This is not socialism. You don't have to worry about whether I'm going to lose money trying something. It's a, it, that's something I should be allowed to try to do. I think I can get a little bit of that market share and maybe have a little bit of free time and maybe visit the same 5,000 people I sold cars to, but I don't have to wait on them hand and foot anymore. That's what I hope. I hope this council will consider sending this app back up for debate just long enough for the county to make their decision. Hey, if they turn me down, I'll repackage it in 10, 10 different ways until I find a way I can make a living. Now, Joe McMinniman did call me back, and he I asked him, I said, Mr. McMinniman, what would you suggest that a business owner like me who wants Mr. to switch Mayor, business I really models? Think you're, you're, you've exhausted all the patience yes. of the council. Oh well, that, anything else? <clears throat> 
if you direct me. Ms. I apologize, Renita, uh, but I'm looking please. for some suggestions. I'm looking to work with well, the your council. Case, uh, not let's be the clear. Council. Tonight we are talking about this annexation of all the properties, just not yours. And then, so uh, your case, it sounds like if this passes, of course, will come up later. So we appreciate it. Mayor, I appreciate your time at City Council. Thank I you. want to make a genuine apology for any offensive oh, comments I've made. I'm brand new to the system. You know. I just said appreciate you've been here before. Well, three times. It's pretty polished. She's and good. then maybe 15 <laughs> years good. ago, one time. <laughs> Next is uh, Gary Budd. If you'd come up, please. Excuse We'd me. appreciate it. Thank you. If you'd state your name and address for the council, we'd appreciate it. Uh, my name is Gary Budd. Uh, I live at 3212 Ridgewood Avenue in uh, Springfield, Illinois. I am also the uh, Springfield Township Supervisor, have been since 2001. This annexation come up doors three years ago, four mm -hmm. years ago? I, I don't know. It's close About three to that. years ago. Uh, we were against it then. We're against it now. Uh, we sent, I think it, let's go, uh, my, or, uh, Frank should have got this yesterday from the township uh, opposing it. Yeah. I hope you did. They didn't give one of the other papers to you. I apologize for that. Let me say this. I have went personally to every piece of property that's involved here. I don't. I, I would ask a raise of hands how many that's actually went and looked at every piece of property. I can tell you where they're at. I don't think there might be one or two, and, and I'm including you, Mayor, mm -hmm. though which each, each that piece of property is. I know. I went and looked. I've had business owners contact me. Did I contact the city council? I'm out working for the people that are in Springfield Township. That was my first goal. I did talk to Jim Donlin. I've got, a, I've got talking points, and trust me, I try to keep mine because I'm the supervisor. We don't. Number two is, you guys use a concept that says buy local. I, I'm 100% behind that, but let me explain something to you. Once you do this, the sales tax for those areas will increase of those businesses. Also, their property taxes are going to increase because our property taxes are not high. Next is, you're destroying township government, guys. You're simply what you're doing here is with the city. They're taking in their, their, their boxing us. And, I, and I've got this wrote down in notes here, guys. You have taken Interstate 55, Interstate 72, and Veterans Parkway, and you have completely circled the city of Springfield. I'm telling you up front, if you keep it up, I'm surrounded, guys. I'm going in the city. Not by choice, but because of the city council. I live within two blocks of the trailer park. There's three of them. I didn't want them down there. That was 20 years ago. It was annexed to the city. You've went across Interstate 55. You, you keep broadening it out. So if you take anything that's surrounded in the areas I just mentioned, we're in a hole in the donut, guys. And there's hundreds of houses, quite a few businesses. These businesses do not, that I have got to talk to, do not want to go into the city. Some of those projected within three to five years, they will be out of business. These are, most of these businesses are mom and pop business that started back in the 50s and 60s, guys, that have a very potential of closing their doors. It's wrong. Come on. The city of Springfield doesn't live within their means, so let's gobble up townships. You went west. You took up in, uh, uh, Gardner Township. You've been out to Woodside Town. I talked to the Woodside uh, assessor and, and, and supervisor last week. They're against it. The supervisor out there called me and said, did, uh, did any of the uh, news stations call you, Gary? No. He said, I'm going to give them your phone number, and I'm going to tell them to call you. Nobody in the news media called me, guys, because they'd have got an ear fool. I'm against it. Next thing is, you're going to ask these areas in, you're going to have to put in uh, sidewalks, you're going to have to upgrade part of the area of streets and more lights. There is five pieces of property that 
I don't know how they got into this, but there's four pieces of property over on Livingston Avenue that three of them are houses, one of them is a trailer, and the other one's a, va there's a vacant lot next to the corner of Livingston and Jackson. I think you know what I'm talking about. Uh, not a very, you know, it's, it's a lower area of, of the Springfield Township, one of our, our rough areas. Uh, the other house is uh, way out on uh, uh, Cook Street beyond, uh, it's just east of uh, operating engineers out there. We still have houses that's across the interstate there. Uh, guys, I, I, I'm going to, because it's five minutes and I believe in it, I, I'm against it. Also, if you annex this in, do me a favor. Mow your right of ways. You own that property that's called railroad. Go take a look at it, guys. The weeds are, some of them are high and the bushes are higher than this roof in here. See me? So, I ask you to consider on this. It's not in the best interest of the business owners. I believe in three to five years, at least two to three, possibly four, will be out of business or will move from where they are. That's my, that's all I have to say. Any questions or comments? Alderwoman Turner? Um, I think Gary, thank you for raising another issue that I forgot to include, um, police, and, police and fire. When we have these areas that are these hole in the, in the donuts, it makes it very difficult for police and fire and um, to respond, uh, to respond to situations. And more often than not, the city police end up responding to situations that are not within the city of Springfield. However, nobody, you know, people don't know that the house next door to me is not in the city of Springfield. So that's another reason why annexation is important is because it gives some clarity to, um, to, our, uh, to our first responders when they, are, when they do have to respond to situations. And I'm very familiar with the area that you're talking about because I represented that area on the county board. And there was, um, and there is a significant need for services in that area, and we get calls all the time when um, when we do any kind of upgrade. Well, why do the people on the, this side of the street get such and such, and we can't? Why do they get their branches picked up, and we don't? Why do they get their yard waste picked up, and we don't? So, um, again, it's a it's a need for some clarity uh, for our first responders and for the citizens that are impacted. Doris, by the way, you are all right. This town is saturated in, in the video gaming. Thank you, Gary. I, it just mind boggles me. Thank you. We're working on that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is there anybody else wish to One brief question. Sure. This, uh, I did make a chart here. I had the uh, uh, assessor's office. In this here, the fair market value for these pieces of property, I don't know how many on the city council know this, is over $3 million. The property tax revenue for this area is $83,735. We've done our homework in the township. That's going to cost us a lot of money, guys. A lot of money. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Is there anybody else wish to address the council on this matter? If you'd come up and state your name and address for the council, we'd appreciate it. My name is Melissa Dannenberger, 3209 Locksmont, Springfield. I am co-owner of Prairie Wholesale Supply, which sells exterior building products on 2605 South Grand Avenue East in the annexation area in question. And I would first like to say that we, we do not have city water. We don't have city sewer. We call the county if we need assistance. We pay for fire protection. We have to plow ourselves from South Grand over Rochester Road to get into our lot if we have a significant snow. And we have a pond of water sitting in front of our property when it rains. Other than that, 
we like it there. We don't, we don't, annexing into the city will do nothing but raise our operating expense. And this year we're competing now with another player in town, Lumberyard Supply. So I'm, we've been there for over 60 years. We keep our property nice. We pick up other people's trash because we have constant foot traffic. This past summer, our building was sprayed with bullets. We had a car go through our fence. I mean, this area is not that attractive to other businesses, I don't think, and I think we ought to preserve the businesses that are there. And is it an option to go and to, to the places that, are, that don't care if they're annexed into the city? Do you have to annex everybody? Can you, can you pick and choose? I mean, who you do, some people probably don't care. If they're not here, I'm assuming they really don't care that much. So I, I just want to say that it's, it's just going to, you know, the, the increased cost in sales tax and property tax, you know, we use that as an incentive to our customers, you know, hey, you don't pay, you know, we're two and a half percent less. And uh, I just don't think that it will, it's a good move for my business, like I said, that's been there over 60 years. So that's all. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anybody else like to come up? If you'd come up and state your name and address for the council, we'd appreciate it. I promise I'll keep it short. Uh, my name is Chuck Blankenship. I own Slosser's Transmission Service. I, I, I just wanted to uh, take a second. Really don't, uh, not looking forward to this annex thing. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you guys will hear our point on it. Just the utility bill alone, we did a quick comparison uh, of utilities with the, the Ameren bill. Just changing the rate was going to be a 120% increase, which is pretty significant for a small business. Um, just last month, was that was the month that we compared. One was, uh, the Ameren bill, I believe, was $540. With this, if we get annexed into the city, it was going to be $1,280. So that is a huge, huge difference uh, on a small business. And... Uh, the lady that spoke before me had a good point. I don't necessarily know if you can pick or choose who you would like to uh, annex in, but if any way possible, this particular address in my business, I prefer to stay county. So thank you for your time. Thank you. I think uh, with regards to Ameren, I think there's a set period. Is it like 10 years before? Or what's the rule of thumb with the regards to utilities? Uh, there's a period of time where the uh, utility would stay the same, mm -hmm. but really it would be ultimately up to the user to elect to make that switch. So you'd remain with Amra. And in, in, in order to get that, to get a, and Doug may want to address this, but in order to get a true uh, picture, you don't look at just the rate, you have to look at the overall bill because Amron has a series of charges that uh, Springfield does not have. So you have to look at that entire bill, not just the rate per kilowatt, just by way of information, because that's been discussed a lot through the years. Anybody else wish to address the council on this matter? If you'd come up and state your name and address, we'd appreciate it. Larry Perker, I'm the owner of Lawn Perks, uh, 2905 East Cook Street, right next to Chuck. Um, I bought the property five years ago, and when I was looking to buy, I looked at the cost of building in the city, cost of building in the county. I bought in the county because the building ordinances for the city are, uh, a guy in the lawn care business could never afford to build in the city. Uh, just the solid surface you have to have for your parking lot, a quarter million dollars to pay my parking lot. I have a gravel parking lot now. If uh, if I'm going to have to pay that, I'm out of business, or my property is going up for sale. Um, I'm moving to the county. 
so um, i very concerned about that sort of thing. Um, if I ever need to add on to the buildings that I've built, I bought the property, it had a house on it, I built two buildings, but uh, I'm outgrowing them, I'm gonna have to add on, and then I'm gonna be in the city's building codes, which are significantly more stringent than, than the county's. Um, I'm on a well and septic. Uh, it doesn't cost the city anything. I don't have any city services um, street in front of me. But that that's my concern. I bought in the county because I wanted to be in the county specifically. And it's going to cost, it, it. if it costs what I anticipate it will in the increase in property taxes, utilities, uh, expensive building, uh, I, I won't be in business anymore. Corporation Council, if you could clarify, uh, they're grandfathered in, so does the, no, uh, the things that, parking lot? For example, uh, things like the pertain. condition of the building, use of the building, for example, pre-existing zoning or uses are grandfathered in. Mm -hmm. So if you currently have a parking lot that is a, uh, a use that's acceptable in the county, that is not going to be required to be changed simply by virtue of annexation. Now, if you do a complete remodel, build new buildings, things of that nature, uh, then that can trigger uh, upgrades that are required simply because of the building codes. The county building code, the city building codes are the same. Uh, it's just a matter of the review process that the county goes through, the review process the city goes through, and so on. But the issue of zoning, use of the building, condition of the building, so on and so on, uh, the city, uh, by annex, uh, through the annexation, you're essentially grandfathered in for the existing uses or uh, the use that is taking place on the building as it relates to parking lots and so on. Okay. Is there any questions or comments for the speaker? Oh, I do a, Go ahead. Com yes. a comment about previously stated the beautification. Sure. Um, I'm in the lawn care business, landscaping. And the city went to the expense, and I understand you got some corporate donors to help do a beautification at the corner of South Grand in front of J.C. Penney's and on West Wabash in front of Kmart, both of which properties at that time my company was maintaining. And, and that was fine, and they did look good when they were first put in. And now the city uh, park district, I guess, is supposed to take care of them. They come about twice a year, and they weed the beds when the weeds are this tall. And, and so I gave the owners of JLL properties that bought Kmart and did all that renovation. Uh, they said, it looks terrible. I said, it's not ours. I didn't put it in. The city put it in. It says right on the Springfield Park District. So I gave them price for us to take care of it, and they said, no, we'll just let the city keep taking care of it, even though it looked terrible. So uh, an observation from someone on the beautification of the city might be better off just letting the property owners take care of the properties themselves because there's a higher degree of uh, responsibility. Thank you. Plus, it's cheaper. Nate, you want to comment on that? <laughs> I'm not familiar with the Kmart one, but uh, <laughs> if you want to, that's up to you. But really, the uh, on that, that's one of the things we're looking at. Springfield Green, you're right with the private sector, and so uh, those services would probably be bid out, I would imagine, for some of these properties. That's the challenge: is the maintenance of it. That's correct, and we're planning on working with the Urban Forestry Commission on coming up with a holistic approach as well as um, looking at um, helping um, modify some of our duties uh, in, in tackling the, the green areas as well as planting additional trees too along the corridors. So the, uh, and then the when area. I spoke earlier, too, I just wanted to hit on this, mm -hmm. that we have all of the roads, not the majority. We, we do have all of the roads that, are, that, that, are, that would be township roads. We are already maintaining all of them. And we have a maintenance agreement even with, uh, with IDOT to maintain Clear Lake Avenue, too. And then uh, is the Kmart, is that our responsibility? That was the one that was redone out west, I believe. That's correct. And mm -hmm. we can discuss with them if they want to volunteer and help keep that clean. Very good. Is there anybody else wish to address the council on this matter? If you'd come forward and state your name and address for the council, we'd appreciate it. My name is uh, Ken Miller. My family runs an uh, autocraft body shop at 2500 block of South Grand. And uh, I'd like to let you know that I do oppose this ordinance. Um, four years ago, it was four years ago in 2015, this was discussed, debated, 
and decided. Nothing has changed on us property owners' part at all. And now four years later, here we are again. If this is this important to the city, why aren't you uh, having a voluntary program to reach out to all of us property owners and address our concerns? Because we have very real grave concerns. That being said, he brought up the police, the fire. This has been beat to death in the last four years. County provides my police. City has never been out there. I'm in a fire protection district. I pay for it. It's a line item on my tax bill. Uh, in my area, the cost to do business is extremely high. Uh, I mean, it's challenging and difficult to say the least to do business on the east side of Springfield. A big concern of mine it, because of that is uh, the tax burden. In the last 10 years, my business is my business has dropped 50%. I've lost 50% of my customer base. Without fail, all of them have told me they're afraid to come on, they're afraid of their safety to come on the east side of Springfield. So we're, in light of that, the financial issue is a very big deal to me. And most certainly, if I'm forced into the city, my property taxes will go up. And that's a burden I cannot bear. Bear with me, I'm really nervous here. That's right. Uh, it's been brought up uh, in the newspaper I read that said somehow or another that we uh, are benefiting from city planning and development. I would like to dispute that. There has been no city planning development ever on the east side of Springfield. My family has been there 69 years. I have been there personally 40 years. I've never seen it. I have not benefited by by one bit at all. And I'd like to add that these businesses that are been talked about on South Grand Avenue are actually of value to the city. If you look down at they were talking about, you were talking about you're wanting to beautify the corridors, drive by our businesses that are all in the county. Every one of them is well-maintained, attractive, and their long-term business has been there a lot of years. We are an asset to the city, just like we are. I mean, what do you want, more vacant buildings? Just our long-term business in the area uh, adds to the value of the east side of Springfield. Another thing that's really important and very means an awful lot to me is a matter of governance. My grandfather bought that property in 1950. He built a building, built a house, built a family there. In 1950, that location was well out of the city of Springfield. We did not move. The city of Springfield grew to us. Part of the reason he chose that location it was specifically because of the county government. See, the county government be best fits our needs, the taxing structure, the codes, the ordinances, and that has not changed, even to this day. We're no different than any other municipality that's in the midst of the city. Grandview, Leland Grove, Jerome, they're all in the midst of the city. We're no different than that. Forcing me into the city is going to rob me of my right to choose who governs me. And I do not want the city of Springfield to govern me because I'm happy with the governments of the Sangamon County. And I can't move. We're too rooted. Uh, about two, two weeks ago or so, Mayor Langfell wrote a uh, letter to the editor of the SJR. And in that letter, he, uh, he told the story of his family's immigrating to the United States. Well, my family also has an immigration story. My family immigrated from Lithuania in the prelude to World War I. They were forced out of Lithuania by Germany forcing their self on them. Germany called that an annexation. Legal in Germany, they were quite convinced they were right. But there was a big human cost to that. 
and there could be a big human cost to all of us businesses. I've only heard about the benefit of this to the city. What about your neighbors that live in your midst? We've been your neighbors for 69 years. We've lived in harmony with you for 69 years. Nothing has changed other than your desire to close these holes in the donut. Well, when this, uh, when you're all ready to vote on this, you all will have to stand and be counted. You're going to be judged on, as a person, on how you vote. Your uh, service to, I guess, uh, what do you want to say, your service to uh, the community. And you're going to have to decide what the city means. Is the city a city that's acceptant and respects its neighbors? Or is it a city that's going to force itself on its neighbors? Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Thank you very much. Anybody wish, else wish to address the council? If you'd state your name. My name's Keith Napier. I run Napier Machine and Welding. I was on 10 and a half street for 50 years. The railroad run me off there. So I, I was gonna go under, barely making it there. And I found a place on South Grand, it was in the county. I like the county, I'm a country boy. And price was right, good neighbors. But I'm just barely making it there, so taxes go up. I might have to go under, so. And I fix about everything in this town for people. I know what an inch is. I know if you give somebody an inch, they're going to want to take a mile. And another thing is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's all I got. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address the council? State your name and address. We'd appreciate it. I am Caitlin Simpson with Suttles Gardens at 2201 Growth. I'm a fifth generation farmer. My mother and I took the farm from my late grandfather this March. Um, my great great grandmother has started the farm. So being a, uh, just continuing what my family's just been doing and I feel that this annexation will um, really restrict what we do on the farm since we already have complications with what we deal with already. Thank you. Thank you. On the uh, farm aspect, how does that change? It would not. Because do you have livestock there? Or what's uh, how's it? Or is it orchard? Specialty crops. Okay. So that you'd be able to operate as is with regards to that. Okay. Well, we appreciate you coming in. Any questions or comments? Anybody else wish to address the council on this matter? Is there a motion? Uh, Alderman McMinnon. Do we already have a motion? Uh, yes. Um, I'd just like to add a few comments. If sure. I doubt anything that a council member can say will change the points of view out there that have been expressed. Uh, they've been expressed uh, very carefully and I think thoughtfully. Uh, from my point of view, I think the area is strengthened when we all pull together. I hope that we can pull together. Uh, if this passes tonight, I think the, the city's point of view is we do provide um, indirect services of a significant nature that maybe you don't recognize, but I think um, they are there. On the tax issues, I think some of your taxes will go away. Some new tax, on the real estate tax part of things, some taxes go away. You won't be paying that fire protection tax anymore that's on your real estate bill. You won't be paying the highway uh, township portion of the real estate tax anymore. You will be paying a municipal um, real estate tax from the city of Springfield. The city does gain significant revenue from this, not just from the sales tax that would come to the city, but also there's per capita taxes that we get from the state of Illinois. Um, uh, income taxes are distributed to the municipalities on a pro rata basis based on the population. Municipal uh, fuel taxes are dist redistributed that way. So you're correct that the city is trying to um, 
strengthen itself, and you're correct, it may be at the detriment of the township, but we are, we live in a representative government, so the city of Springfield didn't pass a law that says we can have annex holes in the donut. The Illinois General Assembly did so. And when they passed that law, they were trying to strengthen municipalities, they're trying to create efficiencies in government and, and eliminate um, inefficiencies or less efficient government. So we hope it works out for the positive. Some people have mentioned there's no sidewalks, no sewers, et cetera. Um, we hope that improves um, if this goes through. Um, this, one of the reasons the city's jurisdiction has extended so greatly over the years is because we have delivered clay, clean drinking water to everyone. Um, that, that, that connects to the city. We've got a, a great reputation. Chatham now regrets they disconnected the water from the city of Springfield. So, um, Mayor, thanks for bringing this forward. You know, um, you, we're hoping to annex all the holes in the donut um, in every area of the city. Um, and um, I think when we pull together stronger, it'll um, be to the advantage of everyone. And uh, just a last point of view is, if you're saying that as, a business, as businesses, you operate with an advantage being outside the city, then you're also saying that the existing businesses that compete with you are operating at a disadvantage. And I think what this is, does is it levels the playing field so that they're all on the same level playing field. And so from an automatic point of view, why should we vote to disadvantage the businesses that, I know that's not a popular argument, but it has to be stated because we have constituents too that make these comments to us. So um, just had to throw that out there. Anybody wish others? Any other comments? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the motion passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. We would like to uh, thank everybody that did make a comment, and uh, we look forward to working with you to improve the area. Mr. Mayor, I make an, um, I'd like to make an omnibus uh, a motion for an omnibus vote on on omnibus vote on 2019-368 through 375. Second. And second for an omnibus vote for agenda number 2019-368 through 2019-375. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. Motion carries. 2019-368, an ordinance approving the appointment of Susan Allen to the Springfield Urban Forestry Commission. 2019-369, an ordinance approving the appointment of Rianne Hawkins to the Urban Springfield Urban Forestry Commission. 2019-370, an ordinance approving the appointment of Randy Belleville to the Springfield Urban Forestry Commission. 2019-371, ordinance approving the appointment of Jan von Quaylen to the Springfield Urban Forestry Commission 2019-372, an ordinance approving the appointment of Amy McCune, PhD, to the Springfield Urban Forestry Commission 2019-373, an ordinance approving the appointment of Michael Pierce to the Springfield Urban Forestry Commission 2019-374, an ordinance approving the appointment of Deanie Murphy to the Springfield Disabilities Commission, 2019-375, ordinance approving the appointment of Ernestine Lawrence to the Springfield Urban Forestry Commission. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. second. Been moved and second to approve the appointments. Any discussion? If there's anybody uh, that I read the name, if they come up and introduce themselves, we'd appreciate it. Some came last week. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm the only one standing. I hope I get extra credit. I'm Rianne Hawkins. Thank you very much for your consideration for the Urban Forestry Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Chair will entertain a motion to uh, place agenda number 2019-368 through 2019-375 on final passage. Second. Second. The movement second it. Any discussion? All in favor say uh, vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the ordinance is passed uh, by 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is number 2019-376, an ordinance authorizing a sponsorship payment of $10,000 to the Springfield Sliders pursuant to Article 7, Chapter 37, Section 37.62. 
of the 1988 City of Springfield Code of Ordinances as amended for the Springfield Convention Visitors Bureau as amended. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2019-376 on final passage. So moved. Second. Second. The move and second, any discussion? I don't know if Todd, you wanna say anything or give a recap of the season or anything like that? I don't know if anybody wants to recap this season. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have two important fans right in front. Very they're, loyal. They're the most amazing people I know, to be That's honest. Right. Uh, they really do great work for us. But I just wanna let you guys know something that you might not know. I even mentioned it to Andrew as we were coming in and he said he wasn't aware either. So just so you guys know, just in the last two years, uh, since uh, we've been partnering together, we have now been listed in the Elite Eight for best ballparks in the nation, rated by Ballparks Digest. Prior to my time, we've never been in the top 100. So to make it to the Elite Eight, just to toot our own horn for a second, we lost to the eventual winner, and it's uh, like March Madness, kind of head-to-head. Uh, it's voted on by people in the industry. They have to come to the facility. So not only are is it people here, fans, and advertising that we're doing to promote that, people are coming into our community to come to the ballpark to look at it, people that are involved in the sports industry and involved in Ballparks Digest and uh, different venue magazines. So I think that's something important to know, and I think that's something really good for Springfield. The other one is, since I've been here 2016, well, I guess I'll slightly recap. Just for benefit, we didn't have the greatest season wins and losses. Uh, had a lot of bad luck. We have the most losses by three or less runs in league history this year. So obviously that just speaks to, to bad luck there. I mean, any kind of sport. So uh, having said that, it was our worst attended year since, since we've had with losing. Also, we rained, weather was the worst by far we've ever had. We rained out two of our fireworks nights. So obviously that affects attendance and those types of things. Having said that, we were still 54th in the nation in attendance uh, out of over 400 teams in summer collegiate baseball. So just so you guys are aware of uh, those different facts, obviously it's attributed to our advertising, everything we're doing at the facility. I wish I could show you a before picture of when I took the team over to where we're at now as far as what the stadium looked like, what the facility was at, and not that I'm taking credit for all that. Park District has done some amazing things with us, especially just doing the locker room. So just wanted to let you guys know on a few of those points. Happy to take any questions you guys have on anything but at least wanted to let you guys know that because maybe some of you did know that, but I think that is something that hasn't been known in Springfield very much for what we've done the last couple of years. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments for Todd? We appreciate the great work you've done, especially sprucing up uh, Lamphere Park. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And you did invite us out for the county city softball game if we want to have it out there, if that still holds true. Whenever, whenever you guys would like, I'm certainly open to that. We Very can good. certainly work on that for next year as well if it's too late for you guys this year. Sounds good. Any? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you. Very much. Settle thank you, Todd. Sure. Appreciate and by the way, I will make the comment. Uh, I'm a turtle person, so I love your mascot. Uh. <laughs> yes. And my daughter loved the shirt I bought. You know, yeah, yeah, that's great. That's Appreciate awesome. it. And I certainly urge everybody to come out next season as well. Uh, I mean, it's great family fun uh, entertainment, and we're happy to be here in Springfield. And, I mean, I've heard some things about people thinking we're leaving or anything like that. I want to let you guys know that's not on the radar whatsoever. We're not going anywhere. Great. Thanks, Thank Appreciate you very much. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the ordinance passes eight voting yes, one voting no. Next item on the agenda is number 2019-377, an ordinance authorizing execution of a grant agreement with Downtown Springfield Incorporated for an amount not to exceed $50,000. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2019-377 on final passage. So moved. Second. second. It moved and second. The chair will entertain a motion to amend agenda number 2019-377. Second. And then, uh, has the, if you want to go over the amendment, Councillor, uh, I think it was just. Yeah, it's, it's really a technical amendment just to get the correct uh, account code in the ordinance. Um, and it would be amendment number one, and it just changes the uh, uh, which account the funds are coming from. So any questions on the amendment? All those in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Discussion on the amendment or the ordinance as amended. So, a uh, question. So, uh, 
Is the, is the funding still hotel motel tax? Ye yes. If you'd like to come up, Mount. It comes from economic development. We've got it. What's the source of the economic development funds? Uh, Bill, do you remember? It was budgeted in. Ten. It was budgeted. Yeah, we have it budgeted in. Now, if Scott wants to take it over, I'm more than happy to let him do that. But no, yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. So the change it is on the amend. Does it not say on the amendment what it was? It's on, it's just code language. So, yep. Bill, do you know what? Uh, I haven't seen the amendment there. Or maybe that's what the amendment is. It's uh, here. Here. Yeah. It's what was supplied from um, LBM. Mm -hmm. Corporate fund. Mm -hmm. And what was it? What was it before we changed it to corporate fund? Uh, fund 21 is convention visitors. So I think this is an odd change because we approved in the budget. The, my recollection is we the fund came from hotel motel tax. Uh, that was uh, no. probably two years ago. I think two, it was right. Two years ago. Yes, this past year it was went to um, to economic development. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mayor? Alderman Hanauer. And Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that we put we put a lot of these in the corporate because we shifted money over because of we can't pay out of a certain fund or something. Was this one of them? Because we had we had the budget line in, and I remember this one in particular. There was a, there was a few of them, but I don't. I, I thought it was so that, that we could pay out through the corporate for some reason. Well, there, there were a few instances where we had some from the past that we put in the budget. I don't remember offhand if this was one of them. I will remind the council that a few years ago when the hotel motel tax was increased, the majority of that money was going to the cemetery to help support its operations. But there was $100,000 a year that was set aside to do uh, this type of of contributions that I believe it was targeted for downtown. So that's probably the impetus behind the change. And actually a lot of the work they're doing is working it's with more the OPED. economic. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's more economic development. Well, Mayor, mm -hmm. you know, it was a very conscious decision two years ago to, to draw money from Hotel Motel um, to provide funding for uh, downtown Springfield Inc. And, to, um, and the ordinance asked presented to us two weeks ago clearly stated it was using hotel motel tax from um, the visitors uh, bureau and so this is a last minute change that uh, I, I can we just uh, hold this for a while because I, I, I just I'd like to see what the budget provided for well actually it, so it wasn't a last minute change it was just a typo I mean I we contacted as soon as we saw it you know, Scott and I talked immediately. You know, I was like, "Oh no, this is yeah, this is a I problem." Guess, uh, yeah. What I, DSI uh, would like the funds sooner rather than later. Uh, <laughs> they don't care if it comes from CVB <laughs> or corporate fund. I think they just like to get paid, and so uh, we can always bring an ordinance to transfer or do some type of transfer after the fact if uh, you so choose. You know, that's the Unless person, you want to amend on the fly, Mr. Mayor, it's the person who proposed the budget mm -hmm. amendment two years ago to consciously. Uh, fund this from hotel motel tax. I think that's uh, the approach we should maintain. And I'll have to be a no vote if this is out of the corporate fund because, like we've been saying, the corporate fund really is what needs to be used to fund our police, fire protection, and our pensions. And to start using it for other uses, I think, um, is a bad precedent. So I no voted no for using it for golf. And there was something else recently that came up where we were using uh, corporate fund for something that um, should be funded from another source. I guess I would say as the person that took the lumps for promoting the increase of the hotel motel tax dollars, uh, I viewed that as a one-time uh, move to fund DSI. The more appropriate use is with regards to OPED. They're doing economic development. Uh, some might be, uh, you know, uh, tourism, things of that nature, uh, but most of it's with OPED. And uh, with regards to that, you know, the whole purpose of the hotel motel tax increase, I was pretty clear at that point in time, was 500,000, as Alderman Hanauer had pointed out, would go to Oak Ridge Cemetery. So it'd take that um, 
pressure off the corporate fund, which allows for those expenditures that you talked about, you know, us being able to cover the pensions. The other 100,000 that was projected was supposed to be brought back before this city council to make those determinations as needed as we just did with the slider. So that was the intent of that ordinance as presented with that tax increase. And so that's, you know, that was the, uh, the spirit of that increase. And so, you know, if you wanna, you know, make the amendment, you can do it, but the spirit of passing that, and like you said, two years ago, you did it, but that is, uh, I think you and Alderman Proctor had done it, but that was a point in time. This is ongoing, and I think this is the appropriate uh, route to take with regards to that, because personally, I think we need to add to the experience as much as possible. Uh, like we had the uh, Blues and Barbecue coming up. Mm -hmm. They got zero dollars, and they said, well, they make $20,000, that's projected. Uh, do you know the acts, what those acts cost to bring them in? And so that, that's what those dollars should be used for, is for promoting Springfield in a larger level than we're used to, bringing in outside acts that will bring the numbers of visitors here to stay overnight. So the spirit of the tax increase that I proposed was to take off the burden of Oak Ridge Cemetery, allow that flexibility with hotel motel tax dollars, which we can vote on as we have been doing, and then with this, the partnership with DSI is more on an ongoing commitment basis, just like we do at the Chamber of Commerce and everything, more on the economic development side of things. Well, Mr. Mayor, with all due respect, mm -hmm. as I recall, that hotel motel tax increase uh, devoted to uh, Oak Ridge Cemetery, that was a 5-5 vote, and I think it was a... Um, I probably did more to get you that was five votes than you may have done yourself because you had a policy at the time not to call Alderman, and I called Alderman about this. But I think the point about um, using hotel motel tax is we're trying to do all the best we can for downtown Springfield. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that increases tourism. Mm -hmm. uh, good words are communicated. People like the downtown experience, and they want to come visit and word, word of mouth and so forth. So I, 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 with all due respect, I disagree. I think the hotel motel uh, is a better use of funds for this 50,000 than the uh, corporate fund, which is under financial stress. Well, like I said, 50,000 DSI wants the 50,000. They need the 50,000. They deserve the 50,000 where it comes from. It's a mute point. Uh, so we can amend it if you want, or you can bring forward an ordinance, but they do need to get paid for the services they've rendered so far. Well, we already amended the ordinance, um, not knowing what, how we were amending it, so. I think that was just the account number. I mean, I don't, I don't know right. where it was originally drafted. Was there a motion to amend, Mayor? Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to, uh, you can reverse it if you like, but we need to take action on this ordinance tonight. Regardless. Point of order, have we, have we amended the ordinance or not? We have. Yes. We have met, so I'll um, ask for a revote then. Okay. Since I was on the prevailing side, not knowing what There's we were There's a amending. motion for it to rescind the amendment, to uh, reverse it from corporate fund to back to Convention Visitors Bureau. Is there a second? Bells for lack of a second. So any further discussion on the ordinance as amended? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the ordinance passes with seven voting yes, one voting no, and one voting present. Next item on the agenda is number 2019-378, an ordinance approving the appointment of Rochelle Hartman as director of the Lincoln Library and granting 12 months from commencement of employment to establish residency within the corporate limits of the city of Springfield. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2019-378 on final passage. Second. Good move and second, any discussion? I think she came up last week. Do you want to come up again, or it's up to you? I hope people don't get tired of hearing me say this, but I'm really happy to be here. Um, I've enjoyed my several days with the staff, um, learning all about the community and the library, and I hope to do really well for you. I'd also like it on the record that Emily Stone has done an amazing job as interim director and has been supremely helpful and lots of fun. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Any questions? All those in favor of the motion vote yes, those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. 
And the ordinance passes seven voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is number 2019-379, an ordinance authorizing a sponsorship payment of $1,000 to sponsors of the Black, White, and Blues Festival, NFP, to be held August 3rd through the 4th, 2019, pursuant to Article 7, Chapter 37, Section 37.62 of the 1988 City of Springfield Code of Ordinances as amended for the Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2019-379 on final passage. Second. Been moved and second, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the ordinance passes seven voting yes, none voting no. Chair will entertain a motion to suspend the rules in place on first reading agenda number 2019-395, an ordinance amending chapter 95 of the 1988 City of Springfield Code of Ordinances as amended pertaining to the Springfield Clean Indoor Air Ordinance of 2006. So moved. Okay. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Is there any unfinished business come before the city council? Uh, yes. <laughs> Alder <laughs> Woman Turner. We never set a date. Yep, Bill, Bill, are you in charge? Who's in charge? God, where's Chris? I know. When you need I know. Yeah. At the park park park. Park. He's in the park Aaron, park. Aaron was supposed to take care of it. Oh, you don't want me organizing <laughs> softball. I just talked to uh, Brian McFadden yesterday, and he has handed it off to uh, the mayor's brother, Josh Langfelder, oh. with the list of availability. Brian is unavailable any of the three days we were looking at in September. So it's not dead yet. We're just trying to rustle up enough triage. people to be able to show up. <laughs> like it might support. be on triage right now, but we're, we're trying. There is interest in the county. Uh, Dan Wright's very interested, Josh Langfelder. There's a lot of folks that are interested. They're just having trouble getting enough people on a certain date. The county but don't you? But don't you think it's odd that the, that the year that we win, now all of a sudden they're having trouble? They have yeah. trouble. Well, they can't yeah, find anybody. They're having trouble now. I, that, a that has been my assertion as well. I uh, brought that up more than once. But uh, <laughs> they do have some new blood who's itching to get, out and get back out there and try to uh, bring the trophy home to the county, though I've assured them that's not going to happen if we play, so. Yeah, it sounds we'll, like we'll wiffle ball posted. on the Y block to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Might be right. <laughs> Sir, uh, the other thing in unfinished business, uh, I'd like to commend Val, the Azel, and Abby Powell, and PJV for the uh, public forum or hearing they had for the Far East TIF, as well as uh, Alderman uh, Gregory and Alderman Turner. We had, that was the most engaged audience we've had ever with the TIF. There's probably 60 individuals here at least, and uh, their comments were noted, and they brought up some uh, good observations and concerns, just like tonight with the individuals being annexed, and it's all about how do we work together. So one of the things we will have to take a look at is the annexation. I think that might impact the individuals that spoke tonight with regards to those geographic boundaries. So um, we really appreciate the public participation in that process. Anything you want to add to that, Val? Great. Is there any new business come before the city council? All I'll be DeSenza? very brief. Um, a zoning issue came up tonight regarding Springfield Clinic. I got a few phone calls about some uh, mature trees that had been chopped down in the process of this um, parking lot, and um, they weren't permitted. So a contractor made a mistake. It was This is not on Springfield Clinic at all, but a contractor made a mistake, chopped down two mature trees, and um, it just goes to the point that we need this Urban Forestry Commission. This can't happen. We're losing too many mature, mature trees as it is in the city. Um, Springfield Clinic has pledged to plant very large trees, um, and I will hold them at their word. So I just want to make everyone aware of that we need we need trees and mm -hmm. we don't need them chopped down great any other uh, new business uh, again blues and barbecue is this weekend on uh, downtown Springfield I don't know if Lisa you want to say anything to that effect or it's Friday and Saturday no nope. it's not our event anymore I know but do you care to say anything <laughs> it's gonna be really fun good food good music that's right very good is there uh, anybody wish to address the city council? Alderman Turner. I do want to remind um, everyone that um, um, bridging the gap 
is this is right. this is uh, this weekend. That's an absolutely wonderful project that that was born out of the mm -hmm. out of the uh, necessity on the city's part to it, you know to promote the community policing, great community policing work that the police department was doing. And it has turned into a, a very um, interactive, engaging event. So uh, it's Saturday at JC Park. And if please, everybody come out and support the outlet, the Springfield Police Department, and the other sponsors that um, are putting it together. Great. Very good. Thank you very much. Does anybody wish to address the city council? If you'd uh, come up and state your name, and address, we'd appreciate it. And again, the five minute rule will apply and you direct all the comments to the chair, we'd appreciate it. Yes, I'm Simona White. My address is 213 South Durkin Drive. And I would just like to thank Scott for the $1,000 sponsorship for the um, Black, White, and Blues Festival. And Todd, I will, on behalf of the American Cancer Society, thank you for always hosting our special friends game. The children love it. And thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to address the council? Mr. Oh, no. Here comes someone. Good try, though. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'll be quick. <laughs> My name is Josh Banks. I'm a member of Ward 9, also a member of the Springfield Firefighters Local 37. Just wanted to take a chance, uh, second, to invite all of you. Next Wednesday, we're having our kickoff event for the MDA Fill the Boot. It'll be at Fire Station Number 1 at 10 a.m. Uh, the IAFF and MDA have been together for 65 years this year, and uh, this is kind of our ceremonial kickoff off in the following weeks we'll be out you know with our street corners with our boots filling money and so this is kind of our way to you know raise awareness I guess so thank you and again that's thank you Wednesday, Wednesday. <laughs> you said next Wednesday Wednesday at 10, 10 a.m. okay so it's a little fast you couldn't hear any other buddy else motion for adjournment second second, second. second. <laughs> second. <laughs> second. <laughs> all favor say aye, aye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>